can everybody hear us now? I can. This is Horace. All right. Hi, Horace. I mean, I've been items. All right. So for those on the chat, can you type and let us know if you can hear us? Yeah, okay, yeah, success. Yeah. All right. Very good. All right. Thank you. Sorry for that bump. Okay. You shall no well. Shall we I, I think we'll start again. Yeah. 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 Okay. Fine. Getting romantic. Okay. Okay. So I, I think. Do we want to start again? Yes. Yeah. I think for purposes of being extra clear, we will start again. Go ahead, Mr. Manager. Start at the top. Very much so, man. Thank you very much. I'm going to go over each of the projects we're going to go over, and I'm going to give you a quick update, and then we'll go into the details of them. And then I'll also give you the commission direction as those projects stand on how to move forward. Downtown walkability improvements. That project is on, is on hold until the commission discusses further. It's currently in its design phase. Tennis and sports complex, the project has been stopped as a whole, and we're currently retrieving all the information and data that the engineers have worked to date. Traffic calming and walkability, that is a project that has not started, and we're looking to engage the commission um, as a result of the traffic study that has been finalized. Then you first... Many First Street, Surfside Boulevard. That is a project that is done with design and is currently in permitting. Town-wide utilities undergrounding and alleyway improvements. That project is broken up in three phases, with the first phase being shovel-ready by the end of this year. Um, we're seeking to start the process of procuring a, 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 a construction manager for pre-construction services that we can transition into a construction manager for construction services. Abbott Avenue drainage improvements. That is currently a project that is scheduled for the April agenda, uh, Town General Commission meeting. Collins Avenue water main replacement. That is a project that's currently in design and permanent. Dune resiliency and beautification. That is a project that I want to say substantially complete, 90% finished in design, um, submitted for permitting, and it's currently on the permitting. Uh, 93rd Street beautification. That is a project that has not started yet. Surfside Memorial Park. That is currently a project that's under its design phase, but the first meeting having occurred on March 18th, we're probably in meeting minutes of the meeting and who engaged. Town-wide vulnerability assessment with Town Hall Category 5 adaptation plan. That is a structural plan and review of this building to see if it can tolerate a Cat 5 um, hurricane. That is a grant that we received for $300,000 and we haven't moved. I'm seeking commission to actually proceed with that one. Hopefully retaining an engineer, they can proceed with that study. Smaller type projects, not affiliated with any capital improvement plan, are the town hall improvements for this building, specifically the police department and the chambers, a emergency pool heater replacement um, that I've circulated via email that I'm looking to engage you in this meeting with regards to. Parking lot surveillance camera, additional cameras uh, located at the parking lots of 93rd Street in Harding, which is across the street from us, and the Abbott Ave, correction, the 94th Street lot, which is a lot across the street from the Wells Fargo. Um, and 88th Street and Hawthorne Traffic Circle. That is a project that was approved by a commission. We haven't moved further, so it's in a, it, it, we haven't moved further in that project. And 95th Street Sidewalks was a project that the town commission that's really put on hold and stopped until uh, we receive further engagement with residents. So those are the projects, a bird's eye view, Mayor, what we're gonna go into today. I will share with you numbers, I'll share with you progress update on the projects, as well as give you a, a further summary of what the project entails. Very good. Uh, brother colleagues and sister colleagues, um, do you want to allow our residents to sort of share their initial opinions right now? And that way we might have uh, additional things that we can talk about, at least update them on uh, where we're at. Well, I, I thought it would be good to see what these projects are because I'm not familiar with them. Yeah. I don't know how many residents are. Exactly. Well, you, you want to let Hector continue? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I think to go through the presentation All right. and take questions. All right. Then uh, let's go, Hector. Cool. Excellent. And I'll try and keep it real to the point so um, I can follow up some questions. Christina was going to help me. She's an in alignment consultant. You know her as a grants writer and coordinator. She coordinates our grants pre-application and post-grant management. Once we get a grant, there's a lot of work that goes into the fulfillment of the grant so we can get the monies. She assists us with those two things, as well as project management support. And she's been a strong side of ours as we've gone through all these projects. She's an asset to the town that pertains to project management. And that's why she's here helping me with this presentation. You have Randy Stokes, a public works director, Tim Miliano, Parks and Recs. 
and Javier Colazzo, a finance director. So amongst us, we will provide you as much information and make sure that Sandra is able to write it off. Uh, with that said, can you pull up the downtown walkability bonds? Uh, and can we share a screen? Yeah. Thank you very much for seeing. This is where we're at today. This is a schematic design of what we have worked up to with the downtown walkability project. I think it's no secret there. We need to determine what the bump outs with the additional parking spaces are. And that's kind of where the project was left off. We received a permit to take over those parking spaces, but since we received it really early this year, we just took a step back, a break, and allowed this commission to discuss um, how you want to move forward. So this is a rendering we have. The project was meant to uh, enhance current crosswalks, encumber 16 additional spaces within, within the, heart, the downtown area to incorporate them either for seating or walkability. But regardless, it was meaning to create an offload to create additional square footage so that the downtown could have more walkability um, in essence. And that's how the project was designed. It also incorporated having uh, new landscaping. So um, revving up the current landscaping, which is slightly outdated. So those new bumps there, this picture you're seeing, it's one, two, three, four, five. It may seem like it's five spaces being used up, but it's only really three because this is the retransformation of existing planner islands. Can you point to where the what you're talking about is? Absolutely. The arrow? Um, the, oh, so you, oh, you got the arrow. Yeah, oh. want to um, yeah. Well, I mean, maybe it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. absolutely. For this specific location, yeah. This is a spot that's being taken over. Okay. This is a spot that's being taken over. Okay. This is a spot that's being taken over. And this one. So it's four actually. This is existing landscaping that's being retransformed to hardscape and more minimalist landscaping. So it's four spots in this intersection. And this is a mid-level crosswalk. You could see the reference points. This is where your serendipity munchies is on the south side and then on the north side is where you have your street kitchen have you uh, is, is this the extent of the whole project right here that we're looking at we have another page that will show you an additional location uh -huh. so each section there is four spaces so each of these so if you see this little trench drain design mm -hmm. that is a new space that's being taken up but he didn't ask that he asked how many spaces how many space are, actual spaces actual spaces are being uh, taken from the parking of uh, 16. Altogether. So not yeah, in this four. picture. This is just uh okay. this is a zoomed in location, which is a mid-level crossing. Yeah, but how many spaces does this area represent where right. I have four, your pointer? Four spaces that were once parking and now transformed to sitting areas as shown here. So, so each one is one space. space. Four is correct. No, one, that's one, that's one clear, Hector. You put your pointer is on where's your pointer? Okay. Right one how space. many spaces in that block? How many spaces? How many parking spaces right there, there in that, that block? Right one. That's one part that on, in this picture you're seeing no, one. No, no. where your pointer is. Yeah. One. That's, that's one. One. Okay, one space. That's one. Oh, okay. one space. Two. Three? Yeah. Okay. Four. Yeah. Okay. And where's all the rest of the so so yeah, that's four, 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 four here? That's so four. where's the other so four? So I'm showing you two examples. This is an example of a mid-level crossing. This is an example of at a corner of an intersection. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is where your CVS is. Uh, sorry, Cafe Bird. Yeah. yeah. So you're adding one, two, three, four. So there's a total of four of these pictures, four times four, 16, I 15 got it. spaces. That's okay. I'd like to say something. I, Absolutely. Uh, I personally think we should scrap this and start with I had an idea. We walked, we actually toured the town with uh, Hector. And I think if what we're trying to achieve, is a wider sidewalk for walkability, then what we need to do is move the palm trees into where these parking spaces are. And I think we would, I asked if you could please get me uh, how many, did you do that? Based on the assessment we discussed, based on the numbers, how they added is 22 spaces. But that's because we're not, we're, we did a linear calculation. Uh, the commissioner asked me a question of, can we relocate the existing palms onto where the parking is? And rather than all of them, every other. But when you do that math and you move them over and you see what the 22 feet width of every parking space that you're required to have, you're actually taking up more spaces that way, which is 22. Mm -hmm. uh, but you are freeing up all the parking. I mean, maybe we don't, maybe we take, I, I think we would have to reassess this whole thing, but I don't see this being, and I, 
from, but honestly, this was something that was the, the least of the worst because they wanted to take the entire like there was the least invasive of three options. Exactly. Thank you. Um, and um, so this one was something that I have never agreed on this because I mean we already have a part. How come we're not seeing all of them? With all yeah. the options. So we exactly, but we have we have a parking shortage, and you're going to take 16 spaces. I thank you for that um, with the palm trees, but I think you know taking 22 spaces is definitely not a good idea either. Or, you know, there's got to be other ideas that can come about, but this one in particular, just to have a sidewalk that you're going to go in and come back out and go in and come back out is really not going to work. I mean, if you had a consistent widened sidewalk throughout the whole district, which was my idea of moving the palm trees to the street, then you're, you're going to have a wider sidewalk. But to have this and spend... How much is this going to cost? We need currently 122,000 bucks for design, but we're estimating 800,000 to implement. Exactly. We spent we spent 122. We haven't spent all of it, so no, we've only spent uh, 106. That's 106 thousand dollars right there. The first half of the permit to get us the the curb cuts and going through permitting with DOT for that design, the curb cut design permit, the permit that allows us to do all the curbs. That's where we're at. 106 dad. It also includes a uh, the traffic study that got us here to begin with. Okay, anybody else? Well, as far as the project, listen, it looks really nice. The truth is, I don't want to eliminate any spaces. Mm -hmm. Beautification, I'm all for it. Let's make it beautiful, let's make it, but again, who's gonna benefit from eliminating all these spaces? The private companies, the private restaurants, mm -hmm. the private, right? So I, the beautification, I don't have a problem with. I think it's, it's, it's our town, it's our, our residence town. But as far as eliminating parking spaces, I don't think that's the way to go. It mm -hmm. seems like that's the, the the reality is that that people want to beautify, but we don't want to create a bigger problem off of something else. And I, I that's it. completely understand mm -hmm. that. That's it. My concern isn't so much the the parking spaces themselves, but I am concerned about the just the safety of having uh, diners that close to high speed traffic on Harding. I mean, I think. Um, that's been my biggest concern about this project from the beginning, and I'm very much in favor of walkability improvements. I think that, you know, that I'm sure a lot can be done, uh, including improving the mid-block crosswalks, making them both more attractive and more visible. But um, as long as we have a one-way high-speed arterial road on Harding, the parking serves as a buffer more than anything, and uh, you know, and I, that's that's my my number one concern, even more than the this number of spaces themselves. I'm concerned about safety from cars jumping the curb. So I I, I don't know, if, you know, if the designers have an answer to that particular worry, I'm, I'm be here to hear it. But that's been my my number one worry all along. Okay, would we be able to get a design where it doesn't use up the spaces and just shows beautification and landscaping and improvements that one? The answer is yes. If you want to reassess the parameters and not and design something that doesn't take off the parking spaces and that's the way it was commissioned, that's definitely something that can be considered. Well, because the idea of this particular project was mostly for um, widening the sidewalks. So it wasn't really like beautification of anything was more, you know, let's have more space so people can walk with their strollers and uh there was more space for people to walk by and um but that that um the the parking or the beautification i don't think that that was the main focus of this particular project itself so um yeah i i would vote to stop this project and reassess things and see how we can come up with a plan that would actually widen the sidewalks so people could, like I said, with the palm trees, I mean, maybe not 22 parking spaces. Let's figure out something different that would actually have an effect on the wider sidewalks mm -hmm. than having this that uh, really is not. And and like I I, I, I echo um, uh, Commissioner Bill Dostegui's um, uh, concern that you know now you're putting residents in the right of where all these people are flying down the street and um, we have a speeding problem so you know unless you're having some kind of uh I don't even know mm -hmm. kind of buffer you put there I, I think that that's uh, something that wasn't um 
I, I, I didn't like the project ever. Well, I, I think we need to also get our arms around our parking problem. Uh -huh. You know, we have a, and I, I know we've got that on our list of things to do and we're going to raise the price. I think we've really got to try something. Yeah. You know, we've talked about it for years. We need to do something. Okay. And I'm ready to do something on that. And I think that if we, you know, listen, God willing, we, we solve the problem and we find out we've got lots of parking. Um, I, I, listen, I don't think it's ideal to have people trying to parallel park on on Harding Avenue. I don't think that's an ideal solution. Um, you know, would I like to have beautiful pavers there where cars came and they were driving slowly and it was, a you know, a, a nice, beautiful two block area where people went slowly and they could pull in to drop people off and we had wide sidewalks and beautiful landscaping. Um, I like that. But I, I think that uh, we need to solve our parking problem first. And, uh, you know, I, and I agree with uh, Commissioner Velasquez and Commissioner yeah. Velda Stig. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep saying it. I get it. Yeah. You know, I love you. You know, I love you. It's because I can't say it. Um, um, I, I, uh, I, I, you know, listen, we've done this now. Most of us have done this quite a bit and we we don't want to bite off more than we can chew, but we want to start getting results. We don't want to be scattered. Yeah. We want to be focused. And uh, I think this is a bit of a distraction at this moment. And uh, we've got bigger fish to fry. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't love it anyway. It, it looks like, you know, it's, it looks like a to me, that looks that solution looks like a half baked solution. You know, yeah. it's not a it's well, not a beautiful, honestly, elegant solution. Before you do that, spending eight hundred thousand dollars that we could use for the Abbott Avenue drainage project is something that I would not Thank consider you. either. Thank you. Know. So there's a, a priority here mm -hmm. that needs to be addressed quick, first. Quick question before we open it up. Yeah. I just want to gauge the sense of the commission on this, whether the inclination is toward and you know. We'll, Take public comment, I guess, but whether the inclination is sort of tossing it all together or going back to the drawing board for some improvements to crosswalks and the like. And if we do go back to the drawing board, I have floated the idea of trying to get a permission from FDOT for a parking protected bike lane that would essentially swap the locations of the current parking with the current bike lane so that the bike lane is shielded. Um, I think it makes it more attractive for people, you know. Uh, to use bikes and scooters on Harding, and that could think, help with traffic. That's just a, you know, pie in the sky notion right now. But is, if we did go back to design, would there be interest in, in exploring that possibility? I like it. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So one, one thing I'd like to say is that I, I was happened to be walking in downtown Many today, and the way the sidewalks are now, I mean. This is a nice idea, but it's also kind of a little out there. Uh, I mean, we, we we need repairs in our streets and our sidewalks. I I walked from 95th to to 93rd, and um, the sidewalks are a mess. I mean, I agree. I, I think if I think you know before we go on to these uh, design ideas, we need to do some of what we have just on a normal basis. Yeah. Just um, kind of like the same idea with the tennis center. You have already a tennis center there. Why are we spending money on that when we have other things that we would want to do? I mean, that was seven point five million here. Let's see, in a year or so, it could be more than that, yeah. which we could use that money to purchase a I, piece I, of I, land. Basically, what I'm seeing is a lot of uh, neglect, routine maintenance that's not being done. And I think if we do that, I, I would like to, you know, I'm not crazy about this color scheme, but I would like to see, and I do like our pink sidewalks, but they're not done properly. And we all know that. And and um, so that's one thing. I, I would like to see prettier crosswalks. And these are things that I think um, doesn't require taking away parking spots. It requires um, a higher level of maintenance to what we already, what's already existing. And, and that's what I, what I would like to see. Tina, Tina's right about the uh, the paint on the sidewalk. It it is a major safety hazard. Whoever came up with that idea in the beginning, and I think it wasn't us, um, but it is slick. 
And now the problem is once you paint it, you've got to keep it painted to make it look good. So mm -hmm. really what needs to happen, in my opinion, is we need to sandblast all that off and we need to come up with a some kind of solution, whether it's a stain in the concrete or it's some sort sort of like, you know, Val Harbor did that. They basically put black pebbles and set them in epoxy and it was sort of like a rough surface with like a texture thing. thing. Yeah, like a texture thing. So and and I think they did a that was a fabulous job. Um mm -hmm. that, that that is I, I don't know how durable it's turning out to be, but it really was beautiful when they first did it. So having said that, um I think we're all pretty much aware of what needs to be done. Um now we're 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 doing a lot of talking and I see some hands going up. Uh, is it the pleasure of this commission that we uh, we take comments as we go through the issues? Sure. You okay. guys okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Do that. I'm sorry. Do, is it your pleasure to take comments on each of the issues? Yeah. Okay. Um, then um, then yeah then I I realize that well listen let's let's ask everybody to to try to keep the comments tight. You know. Um, I'm not, I see that. I'm not, I'm not, I, 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 I can see the wave. In the back. <laughs> I can see the wave. Quick comments. Quick, quick comments. Okay. Well, I'm going to grade you too. I'm going to give you an A or an F. Okay. <laughs> Every time you talk. Okay. Sure. Man, you're up. Try it. Thank you. And you know, I'm short and sweet. So, um, number one, I was on the DM. Yeah. I just for the record. Um, Mary and Rushing, 9225 Collins Avenue. Thank you. Um, I was on, did you guys? Committee to downtown committee, and I've also worked uh, from downtown several times. So we did discuss this inside and out. It it it, it is a problem. One thing I noticed was um, that perhaps is it might be uh, a concept. The problem is with the outdoor dining on the curbside. What if we eliminated that? That seems to be where all the crowding starts to happen on both sides. So um, I think that we should, you should, we could all, as a town, you could look at not having outside dining on the curb side and just mm -hmm. have, if they have the space inside, that's fine. But the crowding or the walkability problem happens when there's tables on both sides and then there's, there's mm -hmm. just no room to go in between. And secondly, we were looking into sidewalks in downtown and definitely did not want to maintain the red paint because it's slick and you can fall but we were looking into texture at that point and we had some different samples so you could pursue that thank you well, that was a b plus by the way <laughs> okay <laughs> who would like to go next jeff jeffrey Clark, 9225 collins avenue i mean i always thought that these new cuts in the sidewalk was a, an obvious attempt to increase the outdoor dining. And there was nothing about sitting or anything. They, that was just a ploy. The ploy was free dining space. So we could alleviate that. We could start charging for dining space outdoors, mm -hmm. or we could eliminate it. Mm -hmm. We can't because we give it. people free, free dining room. Mm -hmm. can... if, if you have like Specchio has, where that's inside your property, you can have outdoor, outdoor dining. That's wonderful. But to be out on the street mm -hmm. hinders walkability. Mm -hmm. It doesn't improve walkability one bit. Enough of that. That's an A. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Diana. Uh, Diana Gonzalez, 9325 Dickens Avenue. I disagree since the discussion about eliminating the spaces. I completely disagree because the people still is going to start um, parking in double space for the store, for the supermarket, for everything. I disagree that the restaurants are not accountable for what they do. They put double table. I walk every day in Harding at least four times. And I don't see a problem. No one is killing you when you had to pass. The truth is it's sometimes it's difficult for the table, the double table, yeah, and the space is very limited and the weighted and everyone is like that, using the whole street. That is the truth. But after you pass a restaurant, or, 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 or restaurant, 
It's very easy. There is no need to eliminate parking spaces. I agree with what Gerardo mentioned about security. Actually, it's a safety to have the cars parking there because the people pass really fast. Mm -hmm. When there is no police, that we never have police, by the way, there. Compared to White Harbor, I always are doing tickets, 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 and I oh, pass yeah. by White Harbor every day too. Mm -hmm. And they are always ticketing people. Always. 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 And they you come to the whole time, it's okay. coming to the no. fee zone. <laughs> no tickets at all. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have some people on Zoom that want to absolutely make comment. I'll open it up. Uh, great, Mike. Yeah, you you were a, a B plus. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah, from now on, you can ask for your grade, and I'll give it to you. But I'm not. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I have a total of three, three hand trades, yeah. no specific orders. George Kuslitz, Garrett. Yeah. All right, we'll take up for the top then, I guess. I'll have to talk. Mr. George Kuslitz, you're all online. You're all uh, George, George Kuslitz, 9225 Collins Avenue. Um, the real question is, how do you untie this Gordian knot? It, this has been an issue now, as you heard from the former commissioner, uh, since before your previous commission. This, you know, the problem, the issue of congestion on the sidewalks. And the question is, how do you solve it? And I'd like to point out a few things. One, well, first, looking at this diagram, if the idea is to gain more cafe chairs, more spacing, so you can at least... Uh, push them closer to the curb and into the new uh, parklets, whatever you want to call them. Uh, two of the four really aren't that at all. They're more like little bedsheet park settings, so they don't help. And one of the four is uh, kind of half and half. It's the lower right that actually provides more genuine seating. and could probably do that with better planting uh, closer to the sidewalk. But if you don't want to lose parking spaces, then the point is moot. Your only other option, I think, is to look at your cafe seating ordinance. You do have one, and people pay for it. And, and there are limitations, and there are um, numbers, and how far out you can spread, and all that. Uh, and uh, you take a look at that and see if you can trim back on it a bit to alleviate the congestion, because the congestion is real. Um, Another part of this diagram, which has nothing to do with anything other than beautification, is the new sidewalk pattern. And that can be done no matter what is done about the congestion. I mean, uh, there's a new uh, Coral Gable sand or Surfside sand, whatever the concrete is called. It's an interesting uh, sort of warm, honey-colored concrete, like you see in this uh, drawing here, and, and have some flourishes here and there. But that's a totally separate project. It could happen right now or whenever the money's available without addressing the congestion concern. But the congestion concern is real. Either do it through the CAFE ordinance or start doing something. And uh, just to pick up on one last point, uh, Commissioner Vildostegi brought up the idea of people sitting close to the curb of rushing traffic. And that is an issue. Uh, there's nothing more uh, feel, feel safer than having 4,000 pounds of steel between you and the moving cars, but that wouldn't be the case here. There would have to be a, a crash barrier there. Uh, engineered, it would be like a, a planter uh, or a jersey barrier disguised as a uh, planter, which is kind of what you're looking at there in the lower right. But anyway, those are my comments. Thank you. Mr. Kerrigan, you're online. <clears throat> Michael, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry. I had to click on that unmute thing. Okay. So I'll be very quick. Uh, first off, I be I agree with the comment about focusing in on priorities. Um, uh, but sh uh, assuming this project is going to go forward in some one shape or another, I agree with the comments about cleanliness and maintaining uh, things. Uh, number two, uh, as Mr. Platt had mentioned, uh, the design like Specchio's and the Starbucks is probably the preferred design for outdoor seating because it keeps the seats within the owner's property and the sidewalks clear. Uh, this way, you don't have to worry about moving parking spaces uh, and the sidewalks become walkable. Uh, number three, if you are going to have any outdoor seating, probably a single row is is better, uh, and that that creates uh, 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 less obstacles through the walkway. And um, 
And then I think uh, uh, Mr. Platt and Mr. Kuzlitz made the comment about there is an, or, an existing ordinance and it does outline the charges and the relationship with uh, FDOT and what their restrictions are. Thank you very much. Hey, um, Boris Henderson. Here, hold on. Hi, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, the if we completely get rid of every seat out on the sidewalk, it will be a lot more walkable. That's because the congestion comes from people standing around the tables or trying to wait for a table or, or what have you, in my opinion. Um, and I believe if we just get rid of all the seats, don't do anything with the parking and then make it prettier, I think we'd all win. Thank you. A plus, Horace. <laughs> hey, and <Anne> Finley. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Hi, Ann Finley, 8859 Dickens Avenue. Um, I'm going to keep it very short. I, I think that we have an overall parking issue and to lose these additional spaces creates one big issue. The second piece is, you know, I, I was born and raised in New York City. I go up there quite often and Frankly, a lot of those outdoor seating spaces are being removed because of the safety issue. As a matter of fact, I have a, an apartment on the Upper East Side in New York, and the last time I was up there, a car had recently on 2nd Avenue crashed directly through that seating space, which was an outdoor seating space sitting right next to 2nd oh. Avenue. So from, you know, there, there are two things. One is the parking issue for me, and we have an overall issue with that as we grow, as this, you know, town grows. The second one is the safety issue. And the third is simply, you know, I want, the walkability is horrendous around there, that's for sure. But the other piece that I noticed, and I can't imagine that other um, uh, organizations or um, storefronts within the community aren't complaining because these restaurants are bleeding into their frontage on a regular basis. So the seating is not actually in front of the restaurants themselves any longer, but bleeding into other frontages on other, you know, properties, property frontages. And I, I just think that that should absolutely stop, you know, sooner rather than later. That's it for me. Thanks, Ann. Uh, next speaker is Trisha. Bali? No, she's not raising her hand. Oh, she's not? No. Okay. Actually, she is. She is. She is. She is. Unmute. Unmute. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Hi. Trista Fowley, 9325 Harding Avenue. Um, so a few things about uh, parking. So I don't know, it was five, six years ago um, when Daniel Deitz was still the mayor, Tina was on the commission, um, myself and Don, my my partner, we put together a whole presentation with um, how to add to the parking and um I, I don't know whatever happened to that, and I don't know if I have the stuff or not, but we're always talking about parking as a problem, and we know that the Marriott can accommodate extra cars. I don't remember if the Grand Beach can or not, and certainly we have a whole new huge parking structure at the Bell Harbor shops. Um, I think that um, sidewalk dining is hazardous. In September, I was spoke at the commission last September because I had taken a really hard spill just walking home from the Bell Harbor shops where Don and I had dinner in front of the barbecue restaurant. And it just so happened that uh, Mandif Davudpur was speaking before me and she mentioned the same thing that a friend of hers had fallen. So I think before we continue to allow more dining or any dining, we have to insist that the restaurants clean power wash the sidewalks. And it's not just the barbecue place, it's all of them. The sidewalks are filthy, they're slippery and they're dangerous. And I know that there's other residents who have been speaking about this for years. Look, I was in the restaurant business for many years. Sure have outside dining, but I think it should be more like Starbucks where it's immediately adjacent to the building instead of across a sidewalk where people can slip and fall, if somebody spills a drink or whatever. Um, and I don't think that um, eating venues areas in the traffic are safe. Like Commissioner Jerry said, I can't do his last <laughs> name. Um, 
and and other people you know I, you guys know i live in new york city most of the time and it's dangerous not only is it dangerous but it becomes disgusting they're not cleaned well they can't be cleaned well and it is a haven for rodents and bugs and stuff so i'm all for expanding the sidewalk allowing restaurants to have outdoor dining as long as the sidewalks and stuff are cleaner but push it up against the building and um, I know that eliminates traffic, but we're always talking about people speeding down Harding. Look, I've lived on Harding Avenue my whole life. And so that's my choice. It's not everybody's choice. And I also wanted to throw something else out there. And this is kind of like wild, but, you know, in terms of scooters and bikes, is there a way that we could um, insist that the shop owners or renters keep the alleyways clean because that would really be a safer venue for bikes and scooters to use if we could clean that up and listen as a kid we used to ride our bikes through those alleyways all the time they definitely they definitely weren't as dirty as they are now but just throwing that out there maybe that's a safer place for bikes and scooters and i don't know what else um but that's all i have to say thank you for taking the time to listen to me thank you trisha Good okay speakers mayor so um it sounds like, uh, and I, 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 I guess we're not acting on anything today. We're just listening. But uh, it seems to me that it might not be a bad idea to add an agenda item that deals with the outdoor dining, room so that the commission can take it up and address it. Because it sounds to me like we could dramatically move the ball forward by talking about that, and then that might segue into cleaning up the sidewalks, making them safer to walk on, and you know, allowing us to do the things that we probably should do quickly rather than leave something like that to to sort of stagnate. And maybe an agenda item too, where we just give, in, if we continue with the design at all, just to give instructions whether we want to improve the sidewalks only and keep the current layout or whether... You mean with the, the imprint? Yeah, that, yeah, right. I mean, yeah. there's going to have to be some yeah. design work if we're going to improve the sidewalks. I, I, I totally agree with that. And I think that... Uh, that the agenda items should talk about the sidewalks generally, which includes the slippery issue, the, uh, the table issue, the dining issue, and uh, any, any other issue that you think Crosswalk. relates to the sidewalk. Crosswalk, right. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the amount of tables that are allowed, because like some of these restaurants will, will expand to the next spaces. Mm -hmm. You'll see a whole row and double tables. I, so they're I, just like taking advantage of the situation. I, I think what I'm hearing is that there may be a decision to not have dining up on the sidewalks or, or follow the guidelines that we have. Because right. I know that somebody, some of these uh, restaurants are just taking advantage of the situation. Correct. Mm -hmm. I, they, I yeah. was just thinking of something and was looking at the map of downtown. And I think that most of those buildings are one story, right? We most have a few, two stories. Few of them. How about allowing them to do like a rooftop um, restaurant so you can eliminate all that from the street and they don't, and they have extra um, area to dine. I mean, it would be obviously on their, on their um, budget or whatever, in their pocket. But to you know, and it's safer for for residents to come and eat if they want to eat outdoors. Um, and like I said, most of those are are um, one story buildings, and uh, they don't really look that cluttered based on the pictures on uh, Google. <laughs> so I mean, maybe that's an idea. Uh, but I definitely think that taking all that uh, sidewalk. That's also um, a nice option. I, I think also uh, what was brought up by a few of the speakers is um, how certain properties have the space built in where mm -hmm. they can have tables. So those are ideal spots for restaurants. Maybe some of the spots where restaurants opening are not ideal because they don't provide for any of that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a consideration too with the type of businesses that should be in certain spots. Mm -hmm. um, because, right. yeah, I, I, I agree with a lot of what's been said. And I think uh, the ordinance does provide for uh, how many tables can be set up at the restaurants. Um, and I know during COVID, we had that issue where restaurants were spread because it, it was only outdoor dining and restaurants were spreading out upon the neighbor's mm -hmm. uh, properties. And the way it was, because I had a lot of discussions with the manager at the time, and the way it was is that they had to get permission from the property yes. next to them. I think that's where all the outdoor dining started during COVID. Mm -hmm. And then but even what Trish was mentioning 
I mean, that was something that they did during COVID. And it, it, I mean, they are in New York, they already have a parking problem. And then they put all these outdoor dining things that were never there before. And it's now a huge problem. And they need to take all that away because I mean, if you if you rented a storefront that's this size, that's it. You're contained to that. And that's it. It shouldn't become a spillover to affect our residents' walkability, safety, and all other things. I mean, like I said, I would be fine with um, looking into maybe allowing rooftop dining yeah. um, and they can beautify those rooftops and you eliminate everything from the bottom. And then they're actually doubling their square footage because these, it well, would be the rooftop. Or... Well, that's something that they would have wait, to, wait they would have to, they would have to do an engineer or whatever. Weight restrictions yeah. on the roofs here. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you're talking about tables yeah. and chairs. Okay. Right? At this time. So, so let's see if we can wrap it up. Um, yes. Um, so this one, we're, we're I, stopping I, this one? Well, I mean, I think we're stopping. Yeah, we're stopping. Up there also. I'll get you, Marianne, in a second. The um, ice machines up there also. So you're going to add yeah. sidewalks to the agenda because we need to talk about sidewalks. Sidewalk and cafe permits. And then I'm going to stop all. Well, sidewalks, tables, slippery, everything to do with sidewalks. Okay. I'm going to stop the design efforts right now on this project. Yeah. They have been stopped, and we'll just keep them that way. Go okay. Ahead. Last speaker, Marianne, go ahead. Oh, no problem. Okay. Oh, oh, my God. God. It's still a problem. Every single meeting. I just want to mention, having worked in several of the one-story buildings on Harding, there, there is no entrance to the roof. So uh, I don't know. Um, you would accommodate that, and also it, well, you punch a hole in it. Well, they, the, the same restaurant owner but would also to um, take care of that. Uh, 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 but they don't own I the don't buildings. Know. Yeah, it's oh, the well, owner. That's, the, the, that's, none of the restaurants own any buildings. I, yeah. I, I understand, but it's landlord. something that they we could allow them to activate exactly, the staff, exactly, right? and, you know, and it's something that they would have to go talk with the owner of the look, property. It, it's it's a it's a it's, wish. it's a wish list. It's okay. Idea. All right. Dining will not work. Next, next item. Absolutely, man. Thank you very much. Really productive conversation. Tennis and sports oh, complex. I, 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 we discussed it. Put it out here just to let you know that we've stopped, terminated the contract. We're receiving all of our design efforts to date. If there's anything else for this commission to discuss, you will run through the design. I provided you the drawings just for your okay. information. Uh, so I provided you a whole package, but not everything will be used. Here it's just so you have it as a reference. You have a really yeah. ugly building on the way. I, I don't. What, what, I, I, what I what I would suggest that what I'd love to do just I mentioned this before. I'll say quickly is that uh, after we get our footing on the I think what our priorities things like out of drainage and the memorial, maybe we revisit the recreational facilities discussion later at the end of the summer or something. And then I would like to talk about this option side by side with other options, but for the moment, I'm happy to just turn the page. Thank okay. You. <laughs> All right. Um, it, but, but again, is there anybody that wants to comment on this? Anybody on the Zoom? Okay, that was for me. Okay, next item. Mayor, thank you very much. Traffic calming and walkability. I did provide you an after action report of a small scale uh, interactive meeting we had with some residents um in the packet and what it resulted in people want to pursue some level of traffic calming as a higher priority and they feel that inherently you address traffic calming and the streets naturally become safer we don't have anything in the works we just have a traffic study after action report to present to you and this commission to decide what do we want to move forward with as far as traffic calming initiatives so it's here as a project because it was a project we budgeted some funds for but it hasn't moved in any direction how much uh, half a million dollars is the average. And would this be something that we could do like the roundabouts or something like that? This is all pertaining to traffic calming and walkability. And so is that a yes or a no? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. But it's the will of this commission what you guys want to do. I think it's one of those projects that it matures out of the traffic study. We just wrapped it up. So it's your project. And well, I, listen, I have comments on that. Does anybody else want to talk about? That's all I have coming. Uh, I'll go, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Well, my my thing is, um, and I always give you credit for that one. Um, I I love the idea of roundabouts, uh, that slow down traffic, beautify the streets. We can put these beautiful uh, palm trees, vegetation in each one of these 
um, um, roundabouts. I think if we were to do something like that, uh, I think it would be a great idea. Um, brings a lot of green into our town, which we need, um, a lot of shade. Um, so that's something that I would, I would um, entertain doing. I don't know the rest of the commission, if you guys would uh, like to see something like that, I think it would be uh, something really beautiful for our town. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think this will be a great uh, workshop to have again. What to look over the study? One thing that I've been asking for for years is those speed bumps. Can we get asphalt speed bumps, yeah. please? Those are the worst speed bumps possible. And the ones we've had. Yeah, yeah. I, I've asked for years, for years, because you know if you ride over to to South Beach and you take uh, the door and pine tree, mm -hmm. and, and those bumps are just a lot more doable. They're horrible. Well, <laughs> they're effective. They work. But ones, you just go right over them. No, these ones, you think you, you, no, know, you can't just go over, over them. Yeah. <laughs> go over them. So, so I just would like to see, yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, my okay. Free drive. Okay. Well, yeah. listen, I. More strong. Yeah. Where? Yeah. Right behind you. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no um, hi, uh, I'm Miriam Alvarez, 9216 Abbott Avenue, and I've uh, been a resident for almost 30 years. <laughs> um, I think one of the things we really need is a speed bump between 93rd and 92nd. I know a lot of my neighbors have been asking for that. It becomes a raceway there. We even have some. Uh, Owners who fix race cars, uh, you've seen them, right? They have our car and everything. So uh, we really need it. We have a lot of children there. We have animals, you know, and uh, just people. And, and they just run. 92 and 93rd, for some reason, becomes, and when there's a storm, it becomes even more of a raceway. So if we could please have a speed bump between 92nd and 93rd, that would be very much appreciated. Thank okay. You. Um, okay. And that's what works. Um, and listen, I, 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 I we, we have a problem. Um, the cut through traffic is, is driving a lot of what's going on. Um, you know, we, we closed Abbott, we closed Byron, and now everybody goes to Carlisle. And um, it, you know, we, we're just kind of pushing the problem down the road. Mm -hmm. um, we need a real out of the box solution to stop people from driving through our town to get to Byron and 96th Street so they can make a left turn quicker. Um, some of the listen, this commission had closed Byron and closed Bay. Um, I, you know, I for one am not against reconsidering and revisiting that. Um, there has been another suggestion to make a right turn only at uh, Byron as an interim step and bait. Um, I'm not against that either, but I can tell you that uh, you're not going to solve the speeding problems, the traffic problems, or any other problem in our residential district until you address the source of the problem. And that is the draw where people will see driving quickly through the neighborhood as a quicker alternative than staying on Collins Avenue. That's all. So we need to, uh, as a group, recognize that. And, uh, you know, this manager was pretty creative with putting up a lot of uh, uh, traffic blocking items. I guess that, that benefited a few lucky people. Nips, it's important. Yeah, I, I saw I know that because uh, it's not fair to benefit a few lucky people and not others. But, uh, you know, listen, I think that we, we certainly can experiment and I'm excited about our group here because I think we're very much in agreement that we want to be really, you know, cutting edge and solve problems. So I'm going to do a little less talking and let the others talk, but I'm here to assist and help and push any kind of solution that, that benefits our residents on Avid. And again, the speed bump is a, is a band-aid. You know, that's a band-aid that, you know, you've got a herpes sore and you don't cover it with a band-aid. Okay. We need to address the sore and fix it. Okay. And the sore is 
This is a, a festering, ugly problem, <laughs> and putting a band aid over it, a speed bump, doesn't solve the problem. It just mm -hmm. slows it down just a little bit, but it's always there. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes. I remember one time there was a discussion about having like a closed in residence. Yeah, area. sure. We, and I think I probably, again, I'm not sure, but um, mm -hmm. was that if we do not lose the benefits of the city, but I think having, you know, a gated community of some sort would help. Listen, I, 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 am, I am a proponent, a fan of that idea in some form. And I, you know, I'm happy to sit and participate and try to be helpful in any way I can to make Something, some variation of that work. I think, um, sorry, um, I was also, you know, I like the idea when they talked about like okay. shutting some of the streets down, like putting a barrier on that yeah. street and you can beautify that corner and kind of making it difficult right. for people right. to. So if you stayed on Collins, Avenue, on Collins Avenue, it would have taken you 10 minutes to get across. Now you come into our town, it's going to take you an hour. Or 45 minutes or 30 minutes yeah. because you don't know which street has the barrier. Now you got to turn around and come back and all these other different things. Make it like a maze type of thing right. that people um, come into our town and are not able to get out quickly. And that's going to start getting the notice out there that our town is like that and that we don't want that. Yeah. I'm going to stay on Collins and continue my path. Uh, across the surf side. Yeah, I strongly support the idea of diverters is the, mm -hmm. the term that they use for them. And I'm surprised that in the Appendix A here, the consultant rated um, the diverters as having low community support because I was at that meeting and both groups came up with with, with some version of a diverter plan. And I, don't, I, I didn't hear any opposition at the meeting. I don't know if the survey produced a different Specific answer. Specific location? Appendix A, well, no, both, both diverters are... All the diverters I hear are rated low. I don't know why. Gotcha. Um, I, that wasn't my sense. Ways. Uh, my, my my feeling is that um, actually Ways. the big um, success story in Surfside that nobody talks about enough is Abbott Avenue because the diverter at, at 94th Street prevents a lot of cut through traffic No, and the diverter at 88. Mm -hmm. Nobody really cuts through on Abbott, even though it's the closest street. What's happening, I think, is people come into Carlisle, they're there for one or two blocks, and then they get to Byron, and they have a straight shot out. Yes. And if we use diverters strategically to break that straight shot, sure. well, they're not going to go to Carlisle either. You know, I think I think some version of that is really going to help. Um, the idea of gating comes up a lot. I, I want to say, I, I legally, I don't, I, I, you know, I don't think it can be pulled off. They're, they're county roads. We can't close them off to people. All you can do with a gate is take a license plate number. Um, Keystone Point has a gate, but people can still drive right through it. So I feel like it's a, that's a, a solution that really doesn't um, it doesn't address the problem. And also, it's not traffic calming. Um, and many of the you know many of the speeders are in fact Surfside residents. We need to calm everybody, including people who would get through a gate. So I think if if the topic of the title of this topic is traffic calming. Um, gating is not really a calming solution. It's a volume solution, but I don't even think it's that. So I think we should be talking about diverters a lot more. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, but I, I do want to ask the town manager. Town. Yeah. Um, and I want to ask the town manager, what is the sort of, um, I mean, can we order a la carte from this menu? Uh, it seems like it's all, it's all presented here as sort of one big plan, but I mean, can, how, can we move ahead selectively on some things? Uh, through the mayor. Oh, well. Commissioner. Roundtable, right? What we're, what we're doing is, at this point, where I'm at is all of these things, you're right, are a la carte, but you still need county approval for a lot of them. There is an opportunity to enter into an MOU with the Dade County Public Works and Transportation that allows you that if it's these items and it's in your town, you can go ahead and implement it because this MOU allows you to do so. We're currently submitting, we submitted that to the county. The county's reviewing it now for their legal sufficiency, but it allows us, if we want, a la carte to implement those items. And those items are speed tables, partial closures, um, 
the speed uh, humps and tables, mm -hmm. and then there's another one pertaining to crosswalks. Um, but if we get that authorized by the county, then it does facilitate our what we can do without seeking further approval. Um, and I can circulate that document. Okay, thank you. May I? Yes. Make a suggestion. I mean, maybe we can do a workshop only on this traffic and discuss this. And I love the idea of the diverters. I love the idea about um, roundabouts. Anything that's going to beautify our town is something that I would fully support. Um, so maybe we do something on that um, because, you know, to give a clear direction as to how we want to address it and things that can be easily done and taken care of pretty quickly that we don't have to um, take months and years to get this done. Yeah, so. and one of the other things, aside from having a separate workshop, I think it's a great idea, and the diverters are definitely a great idea, is the enforcement. I think uh, we all spoke to the police chief, and uh, we need mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. presence, enforcement, ticketing, because that's going to slow even our own residents down. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think I think that's got to be the focus. Yeah. yeah. You know what? You know what? Frighten, I'll get you to up right now. Sure. What frightens me about uh, a little bit about the diverters is that we're going to jack up the frustration level mm -hmm. with the cut through drivers. You know, and uh, a lot of these guys double down and they they yeah. get diverted and then they go twice as fast to to make up the lost time. <laughs> now, um, I they may learn the lesson eventually, mm -hmm. um, but listen, I'm all for it. Yes, Jeff. This idea of diverters, although everybody's or it seems to be in favor of it, does it work? Because there's an app on your phone called Waze, and it gives you the answer to every jigsaw puzzle. It will show you the exact route through Surfside to, to keep away from any diverters that are gonna put out there. You, it's a, but you know it will show the calls. Okay, it's gonna do. It's you gonna can't keep your crap a cockroach. A cockroach will only find a way out. So now we have yeah, the perfect store and the issue is they're gonna stay on Crawford Avenue and it's gonna and it's gonna be a five minute ride, and then going into Surfside is gonna be a twenty minute ride. Well, I'd rather stick on. Okay, and Wade oh. will know that. And okay. Wade will know that. Right. If you divert it to what makes it a longer time that's, to drive, that's exactly yeah. then yeah. Waze will always show you the shortest exactly. way. Okay. Good. But if you make a mistake and drive down into the res residential zone, they will then give you the best route out. That's okay. What Waze does. Do we have anybody that wants to talk on the Zoom? <laughs> I don't see any yeah. hands up. I know it. Are we checking the chat? No, we're not looking at the chat. All right. Oh, there's Ann Finley has a hand up. Yeah. Ann Finley has a hand up. Go ahead, Ann. I just have one one quick addition to this. I had to step away for a second. Um, Charles, I don't know if it was you that made the suggestion, but in the mornings and in the late afternoons, we have increased traffic due to parents picking up, dropping off their kids, and quite frankly, driving through the community in a mad rush to either do one or the other. And there was a suggestion, and I know it's an adjunct item to be discussed, but the idea of a school bus inside of Surfside, I think is a brilliant idea. So if we can look at that as part of this calming situation, it would be great because there are those two times of the day where it is definitely noticeable. That's it. Okay, thank you. I, I think that there is some support for that. And yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. can we can we also put that on the agenda yeah. for yeah. discussion? School bus. Yeah. I, I think we need like for them to like for parents to sign up for the bus so that we know what size bus we need. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that would be yeah something because you know I don't know would we be able to do it with a mini bus? Do we need an actual yellow bus? Would it be two buses? <laughs> You know, probably yeah. at least you know, two buses. So, I mean, but I think that that would really help a lot with the traffic because that's a big issue for Byron Avenue. Well, don't we already have that van that goes around and it's always empty? Uh, we're supposed to get rid of that for, for the freebie, right? So, we need to look into it. We, we need to have a sign up for it so that yeah. parents could sign up, then you would know, uh, and also where, where do the children get picked up? 
and then you would know what size bus we need. Excellent. I, I think I, you need to some talk. resident like yeah. the the uh, rooftop yeah. <laughs> idea. Yeah. Can you put that up again? Uh, yeah. I uh, saw yeah. that. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> and I, I, well, I agree. I think it would be great. I, 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 I just like to throw in here that just everything we consider, like, you know, I mentioned earlier my interest in a protected bike lane on Harding. Everything you do to encourage alternative transportation other than driving is traffic calming. So anything that makes it easier, more convenient, safer, more attractive to walk or bike is going to have a downstream effect on the traffic problem in town because people will have other ways to get around. So no, no single thing that I'm trying to promote there just to say like with the school bus, anything we do to decrease the volume of people driving in private cars on short errands in town is gonna help. Okay, so. good. But I, I think with the, as, as we promote more bikes and scooters, we're gonna need parking for those some kind of regulation. Yeah. Where, where do they park those? Well, yeah, I'll be a good problem. Well, like bike this, the scooters are more of the issue. Bikes, I think people are used to like changing bike the bikes somewhere. Like yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I think I've seen that already at the community center where the um, scooters are parked where the bikes are. And then if you come up with a bike, there's no space for you because the mm -hmm. scooters are all over there. Yeah. So I think if we can address it at our town facilities first, and especially at the community center, uh, how the bikes and, and scooters are parked, then uh, as it progresses in other neighbor in other parts of the area, we will know Maybe how to... Bigger facilities so people can bring their... So the electric scooter thing is very popular right now. Yeah. And the kids love that. Very dangerous. So, and yeah. Okay. Um, but they love that. Mr. Kind of Manager. Thing. So maybe with the bus would solve that, that yeah. issue with the scooters. Next item, please. Thank you very much, Mayor. It's in line with uh, traffic calming, and it's a project specific to 91st Street, uh, also known as Surfside Boulevard. There was uh, a rendering that was presented that shows uh, that a police commission moved forward with, which incorporates on 91st Street Boulevard from Harding Avenue all the way to Bay Drive. Uh, if you go to the next section, uh, next tab, that that tab, you open up the, the big old three pager. There you go. But what it does, it, it creates bump outs at every intersection. Rather than having your typical um, radius, you have an additional radius that creates a safety zone, which is called a bump out. It's actually up there. I'll, sh I'll share it with you up in the screen. You want to scroll down to the bump out pictures? Christina? Keep going down, I'll tell you when it's done. And we, we have it on the screen up here for everyone to see. Uh, we're just going to go straight to the picture. I just want one clean, keep going now. I'll tell you when to stop. Just keep going. No one's going to just run. Stop. Perfect. No. <laughs> Can't tell what they look like. Yeah, they're, they're, they're design documents. They're technical documents in nature. So they're, they, we will work on getting more rendering type of pictures for you. Uh, that one is the one I want to show you, which is uh, what you're seeing there is the extremity on the Bay Drive side. But can you scroll just a little bit more down, Christina? The project involves adding two new components to 91st Street. One of them is three roundabouts, and it's what you see on your right-hand side. The other component is the bump outs, which is as you make a turn from an avenue on to 91st Street, there's a safety bump out that creates a safety zone for vehicles apart, and I guess we're not occupied for people to walk. Um, if, if you can capture that in that in the image. Yeah, that's just east of the circle. Just east of the circle. Deep right there. there. These are yeah. the bump outs, which you add that. We call them teardrop bump outs because it looks like a teardrop. What street is that? Ninety first Street, and which is the entrance to Indian no. Creek. On all the I think it's terrible idea. All, single, no, that's what I mean. I'm looking at this circle there. Is that proposed for Carlisle? For uh, it's three specific streets. Uh, yeah, that's what I want to know. That may be a way. I would have to confirm which ones they are. I can probably tell you from here in this drawing. Okay. But I can't see it from back here. One more. What was the rationale for picking which streets got it and which streets didn't? No, this was because this was paid for by uh, the surf club, wasn't it? There is a, this project has been funded through three mechanisms. Uh -huh. One of them is a small property, not a big one, from Belgium Indian Creek. But if this moves forward, we you yeah, want to ask for more money. Of course. The surf club was probably the biggest uh, pay into this. And uh, the exact number, I don't have it, but it was over half a million dollars. Uh -huh. um, and then we we're putting in another half a million dollars into the pot. And then we have a uh, state appropriation for $250,000. So I believe it's half a million from us, half a million from Surf Club, 
250 from the state and then 50 from a uh, village meeting. So, uh, now, putting it into perspective, that was paid to us back in 2009. Yeah. So, what do you say? I think. What's up? Well, this is, to me, this is $500,000 that are coming out of our pocket to put into this area, which is the biggest flooding problem we have in our town. So I think this is another one of those items that need to be, that the priority needs to come into place here. And honestly, I've spoken to some residents, they hated the bump out situation. You have all these trucks that are coming down this street, going into Indian Creek. This is the I, I personally didn't like this option when it came uh, to the commission. I believe I voted no on this. Um, I still don't like it. I don't think. And then if you're going to be spending this money, this is money that could be used to fix flooding problems, with a, which affect um, many of our residents. And I think that that, to me, is my first priority before any of this stuff happens. Um, so uh, that that's where I would direct the money unless let me add let me add to that too you know I, indian I, creek wants to pay the whole thing then that, that's, that's where i was going. <laughs> go ahead Gina. uh because um commissioner glass was mentioned the trucks going over there is there a way we can limit the size of these trucks what are the sizes of these trucks are they tearing up our streets no maybe we can they have a waterway they have a lot there right. they can ferry the stuff over if it's you know uh, I mean, there should, to to the, there should be a limit to the size of trucks. We have a lot of people. <laughs> they could be a big book over there. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, we might want to consider if these trucks are too big coming through our streets. We may want to consider limiting the size of the truck that's allowed mm -hmm. to go. Uh, from from Collins to uh, Indian Creek. But look, 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 look let, let me agree. Let me let me also say this is my pet peeve. You know, this is a commission, and we're seeing this for the first time, and we're also being warned as we're seeing it that the pictures aren't very good. You know, I mean, it's not a very great representation. But th this project was barreling along just like the tennis center was. I had never seen it in the Gazette. I had, I had no idea, and I'm the former mayor. You would think that I would sort of have a sense of what's going on. Mm -hmm. But here's the, my point. My point is before we do drawings like this, we start to spend money, there should be a concept and a beautiful concept drawing of what it could look like. It doesn't have to be the scale, it doesn't have to be any, but it starts to get the imagination juices going. And we look at it and we either say, wow, that is something that we'd love to see, or you know what? We're not that excited about it. But you know, until we see something like that, I I, I don't know how you get excited about something like this. Oh, where's the where's where's the beautiful elevations? Where are the beautiful pictures and the concept design? They don't exist. No, and not only that, Charlie, this particular area is where the flooding problem is. We don't even know if this is going to cause even more problems for these homes than help the situation. So I mean, until that problem is not fixed, mm -hmm. I would I would put this on hold. We 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 we've a, as a group have agreed that we have priorities, and we you know again we can't spread ourselves too thin. We've got to get work done, and uh, I agree with Nellie. But anyway, let me. I, I just want to say one yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to go around the room after you. Talk. I think I think uh, in terms of beautification, we're all about beautification, but. I, this to me, this also ties in with the traffic calming. Is this right. going to help it or not? And that's it's something that should be considered in that discussion. Um, I, I mean, I think let's let's find way again. Let's find yeah. ways to make our streets beautiful mm -hmm. in, in a simplistic way. Yes, and actually, this item could be tied in with the item that we just. Yeah. Okay, Gerardo. Um, yeah. So two quick questions for the manager. Uh, is Sursa Boulevard any wider than, than the other numbered streets? It's the same. It's the same. It's okay. The right of way is 50 feet. Yeah. The actual boulevard is uh 30 something, 32 feet, I want to say, 36 okay. or 32. And those two numbers. If if we don't immediately move forward on this right now, does the proffered money just stay in a separate account? Um the proffered money is ours in our bank for it's just earmarked for this type of project on 91st Street. 
Uh, there is a grant money, 250000 that was allocated by the state. Mm -hmm. Let me see if this doesn't move forward in this way and it becomes an urgency with the timeline of the grant. This grant is kind of tied with the utilities underground. So maybe we could sell it for utility underground purposes. We're using those 250. Uh, right. So we'll make that note and see if we can good. do that. So, yeah. so it's not, we, we don't want to lose that money if it's been allocated, right. but the way we wrote that grant is really open, which was for the overall beautification of 91st Street, which includes underground. Very good. Perfect. Okay, there's ways we don't lose that money. But it sounds like that was going to be my question. Any other grants for the funds are earmarked. Okay. They're, they're, sort of, they're set aside. Those yeah. are specific. Okay. Those were basically those still questions. Okay, hold on. Hey, Commissioner Cotto? Yeah. So if we put a stop to this, can we go back to the table and negotiate with these parties that have already offered to pay for part of this? I think you're more immediate answers. Can we get more money from Billy? Yes. yes. <laughs> by all means. Yes. Yeah, by all means. That's not yeah. a. Not oh, you asked Tom Brady and. Uh, Mr. Bezos. Yeah, the right the plenty of money. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Now, I, I, like I think we have some, some hands, <laughs> hands up. I, mean, let's go I, there. I do have a question regarding Indian Creek that's not in these projects. Uh, it has to do with them tapping into our sewer system. They're septic to sewer conversion project. Uh, that is not our project. I will touch base on this project at the end of it all. Okay. Yeah, and I would give okay. you all. We need them. to know what's happening there. Yeah, so write it down so we don't forget. That. Yeah. Of course, of course. That's the, the the question. Question. Yeah. So yeah, we need to know about that. All right, let's round this discussion up. We got one hand up. Go ahead, Mr. Kuslis. You're up. Mr. Kuslis, you're on the air. George Kuslis, 9225 Collins Avenue. <laughs> uh, the mayor makes an excellent point. Um, you look at this drawing on the screen right now. And uh, this could be a very mundane intersection with uh, the bump outs, but nothing more than grass patches or whatever, or it could be something wonderful, but we just don't know. A simple rendering of one of the intersections showing before and after with a lush tree in the traffic uh, circle and uh, generous plantings, basically framing each corner. And, and people may fall in love with the design, but there's nothing here to fall in love with. So I think it was an excellent idea. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what's the next item? Oh, what's the length of that? What's the length? The length of the Zoom. Uh, it, it's, 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 um, Debbie had, uh, when, when this first came out, her house is right there in the corner of this, and she had an issue with that. So I, she, I sent her a message, so I'd like her to, chime in on, on her opinions about uh, this situation so she can send her the link. May I take Yes, go ahead, Diane. Diane, I was having to do something. I agree to take my weekend starting you. Yeah, I, I wonder, I didn't know about this project, like Charlie mentioned, but in addition, why we are in, the, in that position always to be paid for others with our money when we have priorities. I mean, like, like any mention right now, the 500,000 uh, and a half million fight we have to spend to benefit and others, other people, and especially Indian Creek. When you can go even there, even at all, uh -huh. is my recommendation. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I try to focus on the fight. Yeah, I was like, wow. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Manager, next. Thank you, Mayor. Um, next project is probably the biggest one of all. It's utilities undergrounding projects. Uh, just to give you a quick run where we're at today, we split the project in three parts. The reason we split the project in three parts is we divided the town in three halves, or two halves, three parts. <laughs> the north, three the central, yeah, third, <laughs> and the southern. We are we sought to implement the, the project starting at the north because it's the smallest area, it's the easiest as far as design complexities. It's tied to some grants affiliated with the alleyway. And um and if you could fund this and work your tweaks and your, your kinks out here, we move on to the another part, which is the central part of the town. So the first part of it is 96th Street to 93rd Street. So everything north of 93rd Street was included. I provided you a schedule in the, in the, in the packet that shows how we're going to get two shovels in the ground. And it puts us doing that sometime at the end of this year. So right now, this project is undergoing its design. It's, it's deep into the design part. We're, we've coordinated substantially with the utility coordinators, uh, with the utilities as it pertains to this phase, but the other phases, which is the central and the southern, are still being designed by FPL and others. But this, we have substantial designs that we can move forward with. And then the goal of the project is that whichever way you cut it up, it's a six-year construction project. 
and it's two years per phase. Now that's on a linear scale. You could overlap the in-betweens and maybe efficiently come to four and a half years, four years, but if shorter than four years is really aggressive. It's probably not, not the case. So the project has been officially designed for two years and we're officially at a point where we could uh, feel comfortable with putting something else in the streets. But what do we do before we go there? We need to involve the contractor sooner than later. <laughs> By involving the contractor now and signing them on board with pre-construction services, they can start vetting, reviewing the drawings, providing their thoughts. Two reasons why they become now a part of the project and they can see the unforeseen and they can work through them. And also it helps us when it comes time to buy out and using that vendor with a guaranteed maximum price, sorry, uh, to try to get the contractor on board. So then once we negotiate something with that contractor, we proceed to install. Then we split the project up in three phases and we can issue the additional phases as a, as change orders to the project or as negotiated a extension to the agreement. Um, we are, we, we were scheduled to have a finance advisor meeting this week, uh, last week, but we postponed it just to, so we can have a consensus in this meeting and understand where we're at. But the next step for us as well is to start getting the, the finances process in order. Um, by funding this project in three parts, it makes it easier to, to go after smaller size loans and at a later time refinance as we go for another one. Okay. Rather than going for $43 million in debt all at once, we go 10, 15, and then whatever is left. And that way we can at least uh, manage this. It'll be easier on the burden on the taxpayers as well as we borrow what we need so that we don't have to be occurring uh, the, the debt services sooner than we um, so that's a really bird's eye view. Kimberly Horn is the one designing this project. Uh, they're the project managers on board. Uh, HPF Associates was the original uh, design team, but they uh, they did uh, resign from the town. So we had to take steps after to keep the project going. So how would you bring this to the um, construction company? Or how would you um, get that part? I would procure this project as a construction manager at risk. You bring the construction manager now as pre-construction services and embed, embed them in the design process. You're back already? Excuse me? You bring them all now. They're, they're involved in the, with the pre-construction services. Once we come to an agreement on the drawings, then we go for a guaranteed maximum price type contract where we're involved substantially in the, in the procurement of the various subcontractors um, so that we ultimately uh, can formulate a project that we feel comfortable with moving with the right individuals on board. Um, when did you bring on this new engineering company to handle this? Uh, sometime in uh, August of uh, 2023. Uh-huh, and, and what's our deal with them right now? They're currently contracted to design the whole project as a lump sum as well as project management support as it pertains to coordinating with all the utilities. You negotiated that deal with them? Yes. Okay, how much is it? It's approximately, there's, there's two contracts, both the culmination of both is approximately 2.5 million. No, uh, these are the guys that brought us the uh, airplanes flying 24 hours a day over Surfside. This is the same group that uh, but has, has dropped this trash on us. And didn't you hire a capital projects guy? So why would we be giving this out to someone else. So two things, uh, we did hire a CIP director and they're scheduled to start next week. Uh, oh, capital crew, yeah, yeah, we did. And so this individual is gonna absorb a lot of the project management support, which ultimately does help out with the management of a lot of projects by all means, yes. But are we obligated to pay these guys two and a half million dollars? You can walk away whenever you, we wanna walk away from this, but it's 2.7 million, this is the amount, 2.7 million. I gave you around a number. I just did a math. How much have we paid them so far? I will give you that right now. And was that just for the design, or is that we 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 gone in close to half a million that. dollars? I believe that sheet says here. Uh huh. And and what do we have to show for half a million? Do we have any documents? And half a million is is uh, HPF Associates efforts plus Kimberly Horn. We do have a full survey. We have thirty percent drawings. And oh oh, so that's money to HPF. Yeah, it's project encumbered to date. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Kimley Horn, we probably paid out a series of probably four or five invoices, and uh, maybe just under two hundred thousand. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have a conversation with them, as you know. Um, I'm disgusted um, that that they were able to. Uh, 
engineer the FAA to change the flight patterns from Miami Beach, which has historically been going on for 50 years. And they got together and scammed us and basically now have airplanes flying over our town 24 hours a day, nonstop, mm -hmm. so that Miami Beach doesn't have planes right. flying over their, their homes, which, you know, we didn't ask for that. Miami Beach, that's been the deal. And, you know, Miami Beach decided at some point that they didn't want it. And Kimberly Horn helped them get it done. So my position, as you know, is going to be for these guys, you know, you need to fix this. Mm -hmm. You broke it, you need to fix it. And by the way, I'm not excited about using them for anything mm -hmm. um, because they've totally screwed us. We have a meeting with Kimberly Horn Mayor. I mean, I guess we could advise. Not only have they screwed us, but they've screwed Indian Creek. They screwed Val Harbor. They screwed Bay Harbor. They've screwed mm -hmm. North Bay Village. They've screwed North Miami Beach. They've screwed North uh, North Miami and North Miami Beach. And when I say North Miami Beach, I mean the north end of Miami Beach. Those planes fly over every single day, nonstop, and have taken the tranquility that we've experienced as a town for the last 40 years, where we can hear the birds chirp. It's as if we live next to an airport. Mm -hmm. And it disgusts me. I'm sorry. We let's meet them this week, and then we'll give the commission an update of where we're at with that man. They got the word scheduling. Question about oh, just the funding. I, my sense uh, has been for a while that we're probably going to have to go back to the voters at some point on this because the forty million won't be enough for the entire project. I mean, how how does the the phasing? Uh, sort of interact with just the, the budgetary constraint, right? Uh, because what happens if we move ahead with phase one mm -hmm. and then voters don't approve additional borrowing? Do we just have half the town, you know, a third of the town undergrounded? And yeah, I mean, what, what happened? You know, lucky residents would be underground. Well, maybe, yeah, but I'm, just, I'm curious what the, because it, it does seem like we need to, we need to think about the overall cost of the entire project. And I'm, I don't know, I'm guessing just, Based on what we've seen with inflation on other projects, it could easily be double, if not more, than 40 million, right? I can't speak for a number that was in 2020, 2021, right. 40 million, but we are doing everything we can to keep it within that number. And we've we've had to deviate some of the design intents where now it's the majority. We've removed some providers from the equation. If Atlantic, sorry, if uh, Hotwire is not in the town, why are we paying for Hotwire not to come to the town? If the other individuals, I believe, uh, Really, it was Hotwire. We were paying for a whole design for Hotwire to come to the mix. But then at the end of it, Hotwire said, well, we still may not even provide service. So I said, well, forget about you. Right. When right. you want to come to the town, you underground your own self. We have an ordinance there that says you have to come in underground. But so we stick to the main three, Atlantic, AT&T, and fp uh -huh. We're trying to consolidate everyone in one common trench and then dig everyone in the same hole. Why? Come Is up the most broadband... Much better. Yeah, for I just no, I just went from AT and T to Breezeline. Breeze They're much cheaper and they are much better. Well, at least in my bed, try, 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 try getting them on the phone. Yes. Yes. Try yes. getting them on the phone. Uh, oh well, I don't know about no, 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 no. Try calling them. You know, you're on hold for two hours. I don't know about the phone, but the answer. They're the worst. AT and T. It provides fast service. But if you have, if you have, um, if you have five, what's the one? No, no, five, five, fiber optics, is it? That's very good. Yeah. Yeah. But if you have the regular stuff, let's bring us that. If you have the regular stuff, back to the project. Yeah. yeah. The thing about this is, oh, but I'm saying that we, you know, we have a chance here to, you know, we, we don't want to deal with bad people. Yeah. And I, I'm telling you, well, I, I, I like think FPL, FPL, for okay. they're amazing. I mean, they're okay, right? We don't have much choice. <laughs> um, AT and T, you know, they've been around a long time. But Breeze Line, you know, listen, we got to get our lean on the horn. You can say it here. <laughs> they, I had the worst. I was so happy to get rid of them and you know contracts and oh my gosh. Yeah, the can, main issue we have subject right now. our residents to that. Well, the I, I, the can, I can say Breeze Line has changed because I have it now and it works amazing. Very fast. The customer service so far was good. I and Try cheaper. 
I only yeah. pay like thirty dollars, twenty dollars, or something but, like that. But we had problems with AT and T when uh, at my dad's house. They come there and they put wire. They'll, anything they come to repair is a whole new set of wires all the way around your house. Yeah. When I sold that house, you don't know how much I said to the guy. Just ripped out all the wires. You know, we were painting the house. I said, just take everything down. It was so mess. Of, I wonder how that's going to work with AT and T underground because if you go drive around the town. Half of the hanging wires are AT and T yeah. wires. They're not like well, look, wires. Why are we even talking about that? Why are we yes. just putting pipes in the ground mm -hmm. and letting whoever we decide to pull their stuff through our pipes? That's kind of where we're at. We are going to design a system which is a box at every front of the house, uh, yeah. uh, next to your water box, and an empty conduit to the house. Yeah, it works for everybody. And so whoever wants to use that conduit is whoever you want to use as your provider. Yeah. We just yeah. install that empty conduit yeah. and that empty box. So what do we have to get in bed with any of these guys? I mean, you know, well, we, we still have because we're forcing them to go from above ground to below ground. So they still need that much of an investment. They 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 need to have their system installed. The issue is that the, the pole itself, the majority of them are owned by ATT. Well, are we gonna tear down the poles? Well, the thing is, once you remove that PL, yeah, the poles still stay up. Because the poles are owned by AT and T, they are. Yes. So FPL. So that's a big part about if, if you wait for FPL. Well, so once we do the whole project, those poles are gone. They're going be, unless the providers that are currently under poles are underground because they have authority to use those poles. Right, but that's what we're talking. That's about. why you have we're to underground putting, everyone on the poles. Don't confuse people. That's why we're stuck putting them underground. So that, you that mean means right away you AT and T the is the one that owns the poles. The majority of the poles. In fact, to the point that FPL has gone out and put on their poles. We don't own this pole because people call it PL thinking they own the pole. But ATT owns the majority of the poles because cell phone services were in this town before we had full electricity. Does FPL have sorry not does, cell phone does, telephone does cell phone. ATT have an obligation to maintain the poles? They do. They do. So the they poles do. are leaning and they're falling over and the wires are hanging and they're not neat and clean. They're mm -hmm. the ones we should be calling. We report to ATT they ultimately have to answer to the Public Service Commission. They don't answer to us, they answer to the Public Service Commission. So we have to go to them, not going to go we're saying that their infrastructure is bad. But if we go to at and they'll listen to us, but they don't report to us. Yeah. Because the federal government authorizes them to have those polls out there because of the communications. Um, so that's why we have to underground Breeze Line and at and yeah. It's because they're the ones on the polls. So what happens a lot of, what happened in Pinecrest, for example, um, FPNL came in and as part of their undergrounding, undergrounding their stuff, but the poles still remain and residents are wondering why. Well, that's because it's still being used by communication. So therefore the poles remain. Well, yeah, we knew that, that yeah. we had to put everything on the So that's why we have to, to get the, stick, put everything the poles out of the way. That's yeah, so that's something that we definitely knew. And yeah, well, let's not, let's not make any more commitments to those yeah. guys, you know. Okay, what else? I have a question. Yes. What's the pole in the middle of the sidewalk on Bay Drive from the park? You put a sidewalk in and you put it in a pole right in the middle of the sidewalk. You can't even walk on the sidewalk. That's a service draw for the house in front of the, that's a service draw. Okay. There's a the minimum clearance allowed for ADA, which was uh, met, but it is still a pole. There's no there. clearance. There's garbage. There, there, there is a clearance. If, if there's a temporary obstruction there, then that's a different issue. Yeah. But it was built with a temporary clearance of 36 to 42 inches. But I do agree. There is a pole in the middle of the sidewalk. Yeah, there's so. all, well, the person who lives there puts all their garbage cans around it, so you cannot get around that pole. So if they're ADA constructing it, they need to know to move their garbage. All right. So let's, let, guys, Thanks, okay, yeah. let's let's get back on track here. Um, Definitely so, moving forward with underground. Well, I think we are. Yes. Yeah. So look, I, I'm still confused about. I mean, the, the money. Is, I, I I just want to mm -hmm. say, like, I I think we should be preparing mentally. For the possibility of a referendum question to borrow more money if we need well, it. Well, can we get, first get the cost? I mean, that's yes. I think that I think the cost right. is a more important thing. What is the Let, project let's, cost? Let's get the cost and, and we're working toward that now, correct? Yes, I have a timeline I put together that I'm owing you a cost by just so I can speak to the documents I presented to you. But this uh, attachment um, shows your whole plan. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's sorry, I'm not a big schematics guy, but I'm really technical guy. So I'll give you full charts. Uh -huh. And then the board of the art, it shows me giving you a price sometime in um, December 20. Uh, yeah, right in line with when we're ready to go out and bid. Yeah. No, this one is in. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Towards the end of this year, you will know a full price of where we're at today. All right. Well, that, that's because I address uh, Gerardo's issue. 
in oh. operating. We built now we're this is a primarily directional drilled project where with the previous designer it was an open cut trench. The open cut trenches you're forcing people to get in your trench. Directional drill, you're letting people go on their own lanes and you could downsize and be more efficient in each design in that sense. Um, it just means a lot more stuff in the ground going every single direction, but it does bring the price down because it's directional drilling rather than cutting up all the streets with a full trench. So that adds a built-in cost in this to try and keep to the 40. I cannot guarantee you where we're going to be. Yeah, the cost estimate that you were mentioning now, was that item 7 or item 12? It's not gonna... provided here for you. That's something that I can circulate with you. Okay. It was a cost estimate that allowed us to be informed on being able to put a referendum question out there, which was $40 million. It was rounded up. It was at 37 and we rounded it to $40 million. So, again, we, we will know what the hard cost of this project is at least later on this year to that time in the timeline. But we won't know in time for the November. I mean, well, that, I don't think you would have to December. put this on this November's referendum. I think the key, um, sure. because there's also what's not being spoken about here is there's uh, reserves that we get, um, surpluses that we get every year. Sure. So that can also be used for these types sure. of um, okay. projects that will also lower the costs. That and if you know we could get some of our development people. To come in and uh, give a uh, an amount of money towards the town in proffers yeah. for this kind of this is what I've always said you know some of these development orders are very very positive for the developer and not positive for our town but, but, and we're not getting monies that otherwise they could be giving to this but yet we're giving ginormous favors sure. uh, example religious exemptions yeah. but, you know allowing for um all these other things that have happened in the past two mm -hmm. years those are where the money should have came from mm -hmm. if you're getting a full story uh, okay. you know yeah. agreed but on the timeline i just want to be clear we're, we're talking about the end of this year for both you will know double ready full. phase one the, and knowing the full cost mm -hmm. and that that my worry that i mentioned earlier i'll just repeat is that do we start phase one without knowing for sure that we have the money to finish phase three. That's what it sounds like where it's heading towards. I think you'll know both at the same time. The reason why, Hector, will we know at the end of the year, coincidentally, is because if we sign the construction manager at risk now, have the construction manager's pre-construction services, have them price out the project as a contractor, uh -huh. we will know what the contract market rate is because they will be able to go to the market and get all the sub prices and supplies. The engineer's gonna get you the, the units, the quantities of everything, that's what the engineers here design and, and quantify their design. The construction manager will be able to put a price to that design. Is it is it all conduit in the ground? Yes. So it, it's it it it's designed for future use and flexibility, right? I mean, yes. So we can pull wires in those conduits, pull them out, put new wires in, new cables in. Yes. And you're you're making provisions for things that you don't even spare you haven't thought about. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. How, how do we go about getting more grant funding? Because this is an infrastructure project. There was all, uh, I, I mean, there was all this money given to the state for infrastructure projects. I want to, so I want you to speak team. specifically about the FEMA and the break and the benefit cost analysis. Mm -hmm. Can you take over for a second and speak yeah. to this? So there's uh, mitigation grants that would pay for this. They do it in other states. Unfortunately, in Florida, it's been very limited. Uh, the reason it's been limited is because, because the, uh, providers have been protected by the Public Service Commission, uh, they don't have to release information on outages, historical information, things that we need to get what's called a benefit cost analysis developed with firm numbers that FEMA could then look at and say, hey, you qualify for funding. We can get like scenarios where we can estimate what damages have cost FPL or at and but those companies haven't released their data to us. So when you go to put in a grant application, you're limited to data. The only data you have is scenario data, which isn't as strong. Um, in other states, a lot of people, they, they, a lot of cities own or they have rights to that data. In Florida, we are limited. So we've been fighting that. So this is something we should be lobbying for in Tallahassee. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Which is yeah. which is why who are lobbyists? Well, instead of lobbying is for very 1526, exactly. we should have been <laughs> lobbying for this. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Velasquez and I have had conversations. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've tried, we, we, you know, even FEM and Tallahassee, they know we, we, we pretty much beat on the door 
And they just, you know, you know people have been complaining about it. You know? Benefit costs. The, the last meeting they just had like a week and a half ago. Yeah. Did they speak that they're going to take that? Okay. Is that but they do the same thing. Oh, you got to see if you can get the data. And, you know, yeah, we have some scenario data, but we actually, you know, if we can get more information from the providers, it's proprietary and all those things. They want to share. Is there a way to hire someone that can get us this data? Yeah. There's... Because, I mean, I would be okay with um, spending, spending on yeah. that. Yeah. And I'm sure the rest of us would. Also, I mean, to get funding that, you know, from the state or federal to get this, I mean, that's an investment that would help our, our, our town. Listen, now we can all go to work on that. I mean, that, that is a project that we should all work on. And that, you know, we we have our resources. Some, some are close to the governors, some are close to the senators. I mean, we need to be calling around and, and shaking the bushes because, and mm -hmm. I will go to work on that myself. Yeah. Now that I know that we need to do that, but imagine if we could get a sixty million dollar grant. Oh, you amazing. know what I mean? That, mm -hmm. and, but and, how do we go about getting um, an independent company that'll come in and do get us that information? So I pulled some public records from other cities across the country that have received money like this, uh -huh. and I kind of saw the companies that did their BCAs. <laughs> so I have Smart. some names. Smart. I mean, go with the winners, right? Mm -hmm. um, I also, Hector knows, a few years ago, when we were working together, and he was the public works director, had reached out to the, the CEOs of <laughs> Next Next Star was an FPL to see uh -huh. if they would listen to me. They pushed it top down and put me down to their bottom guy, and we never got anything out of it. So uh -huh. we do have comparables from, from other companies, you know. We might be able to reach out to some of them. Okay. And, um, and then on top of that, you know, we've been trying to be smart about how we request funding. So some of those appropriation requests that you see for beautification, within the beautification scope, uh -huh. we're sticking in there the underground. And so that's why the alleyway is so important, or even the 91st Street beautification project. Part of that was because we were trying to figure out how to get the undergrounding carried in there so we can make it happen, you know. So we're trying to be all good. You know, okay, good. okay. So let's let's good. let's keep moving, guys. We're I, well I think, oh, I, yeah, I think we need to find the money. And Gilardo, you're right. So Hector, obviously, if you can get that information before November, that's yes. that's a little more ideal because that gives us a well, little more flexibility. Well, but uh, and you know, need to get a, the the contractor on board right now. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's so it's a, that's a that's a whole request for proposal process mm -hmm. that uh, we'll work closely on. Well, you don't, you don't, um, right, you don't have any idea agenda? who that's going to be. We don't. We decide. Right. And so you're gonna we're gonna have companies that are gonna give us price. Yeah, and then we decide. Okay. But can you put that on next week's agenda? Um, let me, let me talk, I, mean, I, I don't, we won't be in for April. It may be for May, yeah. but April is closed. Unless you get convinced, sir. <laughs> may I ask the, the clerk, do you know what the uh, deadline would be for getting a November referendum item, or even roughly, what commission meeting? Or okay, have yeah, this, please proceed. Mayor, thank you very much. Straightforward project. It's currently right now. Oh, all... yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. George, George, quickly. Thank you. Go ahead. Real quickly, two things. The construction manager, or sorry, the uh, town manager brought up a very important expression, construction manager risk. It's a form of construction contract. Construction contracts are very peculiar animals, and that is the one you want to be using here. So in the future, when it comes back up, remember that term. It's not, uh, the, the town manager did not use it casually. And I think he recommended it for very deliberate reasons. So keep that in mind. Uh, because George, explain to us for me. I mean, I, I'd like to know what's the significance. Okay, construction is allocation of risk. In a traditional contract, most of the risk goes to the owner. You say, build this building for me for $10 million, And then as the cost inflates, for whatever reason, you get the bill. And uh, so the risk shifts to there. With construction manager risk, the price will be slightly higher, but they assume all the downside risk. That's great. Uh, and they are involved. At the <laughs> know, that's fantastic. But here's the other important thing. They're involved at the beginning. You don't give them a complete set of drawings and say, hey, how much is it going to be? Mm -hmm. And you, get, you hear the number. They are involved at the beginning because they know they're going to be at risk and they are going to try to make sure those drawings uh, and specifications are exactly what you need to get the draw, uh, the project done to protect them. That's Got the it. whole. Okay, George. Thank you, uh, Deborah, Debbie. 
Go ahead, Deb. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. Wow. It's great to see you guys. Beautiful. Hi. Beautiful. I'm so happy. Hi. <laughs> okay. Very quickly. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know the name of the young lady who was speaking about uh, the beautification project on 91st Street. Did you guys discuss that already? Yeah, we did. We did okay. I to see if she's okay to talk about it. Because yeah, yeah. Well, well, well very, you, you, first street. Oh, well, oh very, yeah. very, very, just very quickly, two things. Um, for the the surf club, they had proffered five hundred thousand dollars for the beautification of Ninety First Street to go towards beautification, including undergrounding. So those proffers should be still available because none of it was done. And I know that uh, I believe Kim Lee Horn is the one that was hired to do that 91st Street project. Um, so, you know, I would look into where those $500,000 are being used, um, whether it's for underground or beautification. Now, regarding the plan that was presented at one of the prior meetings with the last administration, the last commission, excuse me, um, they had opted for a plan that included uh, circles in the in the cor on the corners the center and bump outs and i had briefly spoken with our town manager hector hi hector uh, and i was extremely concerned because my property is on the corner and after 23 years of observing the traffic i don't think that they took into consideration the type of traffic the vehicular traffic on 91st street it is all day long all day long 18 wheelers that go to service Indian Creek, uh, concrete pouring trucks, gigantic trucks, not your regular, you know, little uh, contractor. And so <clears throat> in doing a circle and doing the bump out, you're creating a very uh, problematic situation because you're going to push, uh, you're going to force 18 wheelers and huge tractors uh, mm -hmm. that are not always caring for the best interest of our pretty little corners. Um, to go through a very narrow area between a circle and a bump out. So guys, I'm very worried about this. I think you need to almost do one or the other. I, I'm not against bump outs. In fact, uh, with manager Crotty many moons ago, we had, I, in fact, I have many pictures of the ones at Bay Harbor. They're beautiful. Um, and the circles, as Hector, we had spoken about, you could do a very, very tiny thing in the center but I think that you're gonna be pushing very dangerous, huge trucks onto the corners, the private properties of the, the homeowners. So I'm very concerned about this. And I wonder if Kim Lee Horn uh, had even really looked at this because it is an all day long type of traffic. It's not a once in a blue moon. So did you guys already uh, set a plan with Kim Lee Horn? Is there something set in oh, stone? This one said what we did, we stalled it. Uh, Great. So we're going to come back with. We're I love it. Have a traffic mm -hmm. study between <laughs> this and and other uh, uh, traffic uh, mitigation. Traffic yeah. yeah. Exactly yeah. calming. It, it uh, also the for the moment it's been stalled. stalled. Yeah. I also, love it. I love it. We don't need to spend money on this, guys. Seriously. And Tina also suggested to um oh, minimize the yeah. size of the trucks going through that street. Thank you, Tina. Thank you. That's absolutely it is. It, I literally I have hedges and they're not tall enough. I would need to have 30 foot hedges because literally they, they go by and they go full speed ahead, but they go and they, they honk and yada, yada. So we really, we really have a problem there with that. So now we moved on to, Deb, we moved on to the undergrounding. Uh, the yes. undergrounding. I was listening. I was listening. And that's why I said that $500,000, the proffer of the surf club, you should be using it towards the undergrounding. Honestly, or I mean, the Abbott Avenue drainage project. or the Abbott Avenue drainage, because why are you going to put a beautiful beautification when everybody, everything's underwater? We're Literally. all committed. We're, we're all agreed on that day. Okay. I love you guys. Awesome. Love love you. Love I'm you so too. excited. Thank you guys you. look Take great. Care. You look great right. on, on camera. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Next. Thank you, Nick. Abbott Avenue drainage improvement. Yes. We, uh, we've been working with Public Works together to bring you a plan to help mitigate flooding a lot sooner, Mayor. We, we've discussed this plenty where it involves um, having some mobilized pumps. It was a great idea. You, you strategically put mobilized pumps where you need them the most to help at the times that you need them the most. So, you know, I just want to say for the record, and I have to say this for my colleagues, um, 
there, you know, I, I wasn't very, very impressed with the last group in charge, but I was impressed when I was told by that group that they had portable pumps and they were using them on Abbott Avenue. So when we were preparing for this last rainstorm, I called the manager and I said, hey, listen, let's get those portable pumps out. Because I, I remember the mayor going around saying we got two portable pumps and it's all good. And I said, let's de the pump? let's deploy them. And, and the manager looked at me and said, no, we don't have any pumps. What pumps? Sorry, what pumps? What, pump? mm. what pumps? So um, that was that was not true, although it was really a good not true. You know, that was something almost a, the perfect foil. <laughs> so now what we're doing is I, I, I got uh, George Cortez. Oh, yeah. And I asked George to get with uh, Randy. And um, I, I, you know, we, we talked about in the interim while we're building this solution um, where we can call out our pump system and Randy can deploy it and we can take a situation that's uh, a 10 bad and make it a four bad. OK, so I mean, and, and that's that's the goal. So anyway, continue on with the. Uh, I just thought it was a good uh, situation to answer that because it shows the residents that we're working towards. And, love mitigation. and, and, I, and let me let me just add on to that. Yes. Residents, mm -hmm. can you imagine how excited residents would be on Abbott Avenue to see like portable pumps setting up for the rainstorm? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, yes. listen, I, I don't want to pat myself on the back or anybody else, but I think we we'd yes. be pretty popular at that point, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, okay. I mentioned also Jason had a system of clearing the drains ahead of a storm. Yeah. And I think that needs to be a routine thing. Jason? Yeah. Jason, Jason, Green. Had the, well, Jason cleaned up. Jason, Jason Green, now he implemented to the public works <laughs> department. Jason implemented. He was supposed to. Oh, yeah. oh. I don't know what he did or did You're not getting the point. The point is, he was communicated to Jason, and Jason was supposed to communicate it to you. So I hopefully it got done. <laughs> but go. that Randy gave Jason the idea. No, wait, we gave Jason the idea. I personally gave Jason the idea. Yeah, an air quote. Okay. All right. And then it was apparently, but he was supposed to have some kind of an um, online system where they could be tracked to see that it was doing because we seem to have a paper system right now in bathrooms where they have to write their initials like 1982. So maybe we can implement some sort of tracking online to make sure it really gets done. I'm just, I'm glad that my systems were implemented. And yes. no one else did well, I don't know if they were implemented at all. So I'd like to that. see them re implemented. All right, continue. Uh, yes, sir. Abbott Avenue. There is, um, we went out to bid once, went out to bid twice, we're going out to bid third time. Hopefully it's a final time. This is what the market speaks. It's reserved for the April commission to be discussed. Okay. okay. But, and but, we're but, going and, out with what? Exactly? Yeah, exactly. So you well, got- We're going out with the Ferrari or we're going out with the Kia? We're going out- <laughs> We're going out with the Kia. We want the Ferrari. You know? I mean, this town can afford the Ferrari. Well, there was the one that we that we well, initially we brought, exactly, it's, it's which pump. was the two pumps, two, yeah. uh, two streets, and then they decided that well someone on that commission said oh let's only spend two million dollars and then then the consensus was oh well let's see uh with half the project which was ridiculous because it came back pretty much the same price as the ferrari mm -hmm. and we're getting a kia yeah. so okay. <laughs> i would rather go out there and get the big picture the what we had That's approved true. in our first has, the, has yeah. the design changed uh, no. there, we have two designs ready to go. We have the Kia and we have the Ferrari. Mm -hmm. All right, good. So, but we we designed the Kia. Yeah, we designed, we designed the Kia. Kia. You designed, no, no, you designed it, Ferrari. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. sorry, we designed the Ferrari. We want our design. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> we want our design, yes. Yeah. Right. I'm sorry, thank you for Why, that why did we need to go out to another design? Because we had to do a second study. If you remember, um, the previous commission before us was a study done mm -hmm. and then we opted for a new study. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that's that been the end of it. We're, there exactly. were two studies done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But here they didn't want to spend additional money that mm -hmm. we already have in our reserves. Yeah. As we saw the paper that was the 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 chart that went they, around. They had Twenty million priorities. dollars. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. So so, let's so we want the Ferrari. So yes, continue. Don't even bid the other one. Exactly. Hey, the the Ferrari package is is ready to go. We just need a commission direction, so we put it on the street. All right. And well, something that I just wanted to mention. Yeah. Sorry. Um, there, uh, there was these funds have been put 
into restricted accounts, we need to undo that. So I think that that's something that the only one that should be existing is hurricane. The hurricane fund, everything else should be put back into we will the town that. reserve because that's how they made it look like we had no reserves. Like we only had $5 million or $8 million or something like that. When in reality, we have $20 million. But when, when, when was that done? Because there were always that separate funds. Because during the, during the the okay. there were always separate funds. Did well, they I, separate them even further? The fund balance right. policy was created, which is of all of your unassigned reserves, you assign a certain amount for the event of these types of emergencies. Mm -hmm. The fund balance policy. There you go. Very mm -hmm. nice. So that's new. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's the new mm -hmm. fund balance policy. And that's how they were able to it's say, oh, it's we don't thing. have money. Yeah. Because we don't have this. It's not fiscally place. responsible. Fund balance exactly. policy. And then we to undo it. Do you remember that we used to have a budget? Okay, guys. All right. Hector. Okay, so we got a Ferrari. Oh, guys, 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 please, please. And so, so Gerardo has the floor. Again, I'm, I'm thinking here about total costs and the potential for having to borrow and seek authorization should it arise. Um, if we go out with the Ferrari model, can we reasonably expect then that the, the, the bids are going to come back in something like the $20 million range? If the Kia came back at 10 to, what was it, 8 to 11? I mean, right. I mean, the whole the whole reason why they went to the Kia was to try to get a lower bid than 10 or 11 million. Well, and we were getting 10 or 11 million. But wait a minute, so, does the Kia on, even solve they, our problem? Yeah, but okay. hold on a second. Because no, no, no. They, the, the, the way that they went out was just here locally. We need to go out further. And yeah, it needs we'll to go, you have response. to cap the wide enough net. Because coming back with the same three companies owned by the pretty much the same family, uh, doesn't sound too cold. Right. So let's so, get well, everybody out. I just want to make sure that that if we go out to bid again, and Randy, it sounded like you had a thought there, I'd love to hear. I just want to, I want us to be prepared for a situation where we put the expensive project out to bid, we get potentially a $20 million price tag, and then what do we do? So I, I just don't want to, I don't want us to be left. <laughs> well, let's right. get all, all this talk about together, having right? money it comes, comes from an assumption that it's going to be closer to 10. Yeah. I mean, but you know, we, we can't know until we do. Right. So we got to do it. But then, it, and it probably makes sense then to keep the possibility of a, of a, of a referendum item in November for Abbott in case we need it. But this could also be, uh, uh, again, something for grant money, yeah, we because we already did receive exactly. grant money. So we could go back and say, well, this, you know, you exactly. gave us, thank you for the grant money, but the project came well, in three times. Well, yeah, more that's grant right. money. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, I, I totally, okay. listen. can help yeah. us with getting more, more funds. That, that has been the, uh, the solution since I was a teenager. Forget cutting your expenses. Increase your income, okay? That's much more productive. Increase your income. All right, Hector, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Mayor, next project in line. Is oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, so Marianne and George. Uh, just a quick question regarding timing. Does it matter with between the underground project and Abbott Avenue? Does one have to happen before the other? Which one? No. Well, they're two separate. Yeah, no. Not no, I know they're separate, but does. No, and they're independent. They're talking about digging. And yeah, you could put one or the other. No, you know, because the with the underground, you're going to be doing a directional drill, right? So you're, as long as you know where your utilities are, you yeah. coordinate around them. Correct. Uh, the main thing about the Abbott Avenue is two big pits and the intersection of 91st and 92nd on Abbott. It's such a nice set of pit, <laughs> but it's a pit. All the work will occur in those two locations. And then there's two force mains that are going to go across where there currently is an abandoned water main. So yeah. we coordinate in such a way that we, we it's utilities coordination during construction. I do not foresee that to be an issue as long as we know what we're putting in the ground and where. All right, please let George in for a minute. Go ahead, George. Uh, to address uh, Commissioner Vildasagi's uh, concern, if you go out for bid for the Ferrari and you find out you can't afford the Ferrari, and then uh, you got to start all over again for the Fiat. Um, you don't have to do it that way. You, if you prepare the bid documents properly, you basically have a bid alternate for the for, uh, for the fiat at the same time. I should that that should be possible, uh, Mr. Town Manager, and uh, that's how you do it all at the same time. And, and that's crucial as you're reading in between the lines. That's what I was thinking. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, George. Okay, 
Carry on. Cool. Uh, next project, do resiliency and beautification. Hey, can you pull up those pictures out for me? Oh, yeah, so Collins, Avenue, Avenue. Avenue. Collins Avenue. This one is, uh, I'll keep it simple with this one. There's an aged water line on Collins Avenue that feeds all the condos. It's 70 years old and we got to replace it. We got grant funding for the design. Because we need funded through grants monies. We cannot move forward this project unless we get additional external funding for construction. So it allows us to have a shelf ready project. And then we'll gear up to try and get more additional outside funding. What's the total amount of the project? 340 design. It's expected to be a $9 million project. $9 million. It's a big. How much has been collected already? Uh, so it's all grant funding. We spent 198 today. Mind you, they get all oh, grant funding. But you don't have any money. I think the minister is asking how much you got set aside. Set aside, right. For construction? Yeah. Nine. Oh, so is that zero? Oh, zero. The grant is at zero. <laughs> we don't have any money. Okay. We we haven't allocated any monies aside. So we got work to do. We got to go find some money. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I think yeah. that's why Christina's here. Good. 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 Yeah, yeah. We need you to find a well, lot of listen, money. So listen. what this Collins project is it's I, I mean I I know I was hearing about it um for a few years now that this is something that needs to be done. So um I, I mean like similar to like 96 Street Park, we should be putting aside money towards it every year. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And, and, and also seeking grant, grants to fund it because it's an infrastructure project. I mean, the, the government was big about infrastructure. We need infrastructure. So, exactly. we're, we're, you're uh, pointing, <laughs> yes, but keep in mind that this is enterprise funded, and that enterprise fund is currently undergoing some strong debt services to pay out the state revolving loan as well as the, the other one's a bond. Right? Right. And, and until we're, we're paid off of those. That fund is not really going to roll in. So, are you presents. referring to the previous water sewer water project? Years, yeah. Okay, so that this ties into whatever Indian Creek is trying to do with our system because they need to pay for the work we've already paid for, mm -hmm. and and what we anticipate as well, and, maintenance. Well, I'll give you the grand finale with the Village Indian Creek project. Yeah. Uh, because it may give us some opportunities to work together. But right now, there is no commitment from the town to further assist because okay, good. I need to have a discussion with you first to see how we move forward with that. Yeah. And, and they are clear about that as much as they will or not. Until I talk to this commission, I'm not moving forward of any projects pertaining to the Well, that's, okay. I, I, that's what I wanted to know. Has anything been uh, promised or nothing is committed? Excellent. Yeah, nothing's committed. And this enough. is another one of those projects that all this development on Collins Avenue should have been paying for some of this yeah, stuff. Exactly. I mean, they should have been paying for the whole thing. You're building all these buildings, yet you're giving them in-kind, mm -hmm. they're giving us in-kind donations. Yeah. For example, $1.5 million in in-kind donation. Across the street, they're getting an entire floor and they're giving $400,000 and that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then putting us, our debt, our town into potential debt with all the, the pump, that they that they're not, that they have sixty days to do, and if they don't do it, then we have to have to pay. But they're only given four hundred thousand for that. And as you can clearly see in these pumps here, they cost over a million dollars. That's a bad. Two different pumps, commissioner. Yeah, oh, we're, okay. we're talking about two different pumps. Well, here. regardless, uh, pumps are expensive. But but I mean that's the idea is that you know we we've had this debt for more than ten years. Exactly. So I I think yeah. if anyone's tapping into our sewers, they need to cover. They should be paying. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We'll talk Buildings about that are being constructed. Well, it's a paying. it's a new day now that the last group uh, was not big on having developers pay for things. Mm -hmm. No. No. So. And that's what we need to get them to come here yeah. and start paying for these things because. Um, you know, they're they're making a ginormous profit off our town mm -hmm. and our town is getting absolutely nothing for it. And then this is going to be a burden that's going to be put on our residents. And I'm not OK with okay. it. No, and, and this Collins has to this has to take yeah. place because if you look at it, Collins is half the population. Exactly. Absolutely. Uh, no, no, exactly. Absolutely. OK, Hector, go ahead. Sure. Uh, Doing resiliency and beautification. This is a project that's currently uh, $470,000 of it is grant funded. And all it is is it's a two-tier project. Our dunes, which is our main defense against storm surges, but it's also our biggest amenity, if you ask me, as far as open spaces. Yeah. We need to do two things. We need to make it more resilient, and then you beautify it further. So it's a two-step process where you raise the dune, you raise the crown of the dune, you make it taller, and then the impacted areas, you re-landscape in such a way that beautifies. And the design is in a permitting stage as far as getting permission from the state who have, gave us jurisdictions on the dune, but as far as the landscaping selection and all of that, I defer to this commission to what you want to see. 
but the main thing I'm getting permitted is being able to raise the dune itself and allow me the landscape to uh, be extensive. The beautification part, which is the sea grapes, the landscaping, the selections, um, uh, I look forward to having that engaged. When you when you raise the dune, do you does it, does that mean the area to the east of the walking path? It means that the walking path is the crown, so that get raised two feet. Or the walking path will go up to the walking path will go up two feet as a whole. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed when you're behind a surf club, you're yeah. higher? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the new height. And then how you transition, that's the old height. We raise everything up to the surf club height. When you raise that, you cannot just raise that little area because it's sand. So the area that it's raised and the extent of the impacts of the work is probably 15 feet each way from the crown of uh, the crown of the So now you look at a 30 foot wide area. That you're pretty much going to re-raise, and then you have to review it. And where would the where where are the funds for this coming from? Four hundred and seventy is from the state. We put aside some resiliency monies, and that's what the remaining is. And we asked for another what fund. Is that coming? General. From? General fund. There is an opportunity. You can't get that from the tourist fund, being that our tours yeah. use it's that use that. There's our, if it's the will, uh, there's an immediate uh, nexus there for that. Yes, I can yeah, that. It, it's, um, if you think yeah. about it, because since Miami Beach opened up their paths, you can go, I mean, you can go right now, you can go from our beach path all the way to uh, mm -hmm. South Point. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's a tourist, you know, I, yeah. I walk the path and I uh -huh. see people, you can tell regulars who walk it and people who are tourists, yeah. and it's definitely a tourist feature. And from the hotels, yes. they all use the walk path, so we should use the money from from the um from the uh, tourist fund to uh, so to use that yeah. for the um for this dune instead of again that's one point two million dollars that we could use fund. to get the Ferrari on Abbott Avenue. So I mean, all these projects. I think yeah. that this fund need this mm -hmm. needs to come from somewhere else. And there, how much money is in the reserve for the tourist fund? Uh, mm -hmm. That's an interesting number. So mm -hmm. seven million. Seven million dollars. But, but, there you go. but I keep in mind, and I'll speak to that because, and Mark, you know what I'm going to say. Seven million, but you can't use you can't some mm -hmm. of that you cannot touch because what? of the more restrictive ordinance that the town has. Which we're gonna oh, so work we're gonna on that. Okay, yeah, but you can't use it. Oh, we have to work on the ordinance. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's certain projects we have that I believe tourist funds can be used on the Doom Fair, and maybe one of them, and also a cheap memorial. Should yeah. exactly. also incorporate some tourist funds. Exactly. Oh, uh, I agree. We have seven million in reserves. Uh, I, I, I'm not. <laughs> Okay, guys, Eliana, quickly. Um, yeah, I agree absolutely. That's a great use of tourist funds. Also, the, the beach pad and the disappearance of the foliage was something that residents noticed a year ago was a big deal. Um, and so I think replanting there should be a priority. And I don't you know who we still have on staff who can handle, but obviously tourist funds should go to that. And some nice stuff there would be good. For like, Things that give more shade. Whatever With things that trees, yeah, but they have a lot of things that, that hold down the dune. Yeah. Again, the, the point yeah. is to protect the whole town. But don't create hiding forward. places for. No, we for, you don't you need know, to we, create yeah. height. You just need to create. We want beauty. view corridors so yeah. we can see who's yeah. in the dune too. Yeah, yeah. picture captures what we're trying to do with sea grapes, which is raise the canopies. Um, we had an issue with a lot of engineering. We had a lot of invasive scavolia throughout the whole town to the point where that people were camping out in it. Yeah, for weeks at a time. Yeah, so. Okay, Diana and then uh, Marianne and then we'll- No, I was trying to say why we don't let the uh, air to do the, in the room, because remember what happened also by Harbor, they lose the whole thing that they were doing in the rooms. I mean, I don't know, if doing this, it's artificial, it's something that you What, what yeah. did you mean, Diana, what, what happened? The, 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 why we need to be modifying the air? The air is like that, it's the land, it's how it's natural. We I plant guess. the goal is to plant native species, do native species, yeah, but okay. we should have a design. But you are you are trying to elevate that level anyway. Yeah. That's your first line of yes. right. for the water. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I have I have a reality check. We we the whole beach is artificial. It yeah. was created. Like, it was it was all created. Miami Beach entire thing is great. So we now have to keep it up. Otherwise, the nature will take it back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have to invest and do things in it. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So there was a point that the water was up to the condos. Yeah. 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 I wall. support this exactly. fully, yeah. but let's get the money from the tourist fund. Yeah. There's plenty of money in there and free up the, the general fund with this this money that we could use for the drainage project. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Hector, continue. 
Yes, uh, Mayor. Do you have a hand? Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I don't want. Do you have one hand up there? All right. Um, is it mandatory for all the new developers to uh, raise mm -hmm. to the same height? Mm -hmm. For instance, same height as the sidewalk. Uh, too too wide to answer that. The answer is yes, and there's certain developments that have to fix their own dunes, which takes it away from our project. Keep in mind, by you freed up some projects here, that you freed up some good money, tourist board money alone, just a tennis center alone, you freed up two million dollars. Uh -huh. That's for this wellness commission to discuss. So Let's use that for the dance. So, so you're saying <laughs> yep. yes, it is mandatory. Yes. Yeah. Part of the development development order, they have to raise the dune height and their expense, including eight seven seven. Yes. Call yes. It. Yeah. They have to raise the dunes. Okay. That's a weird spot though, because that's a transition to Miami right. Beach. So right. it's a weird transition. I think they were trying to get out of us. They they There's have to raise the dunes. Okay. okay. We got one hand up. Michael, go ahead. All right. Thank you. Just real quick, do you have a cross section to show those uh, dune elevations, and especially how it connects to the Miami Beach portion? On this seven? rendering. This rendering is not final. This rendering doesn't do justice to elevations, and we'll, we'll work on that. But I, I don't have a cross section that transitions in the north and the south. But All yeah. right, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next slide, please. Yes, Mayor. Now, you third street beautification. This is the first time you probably hear this project. Yes. We budgeted $400,000 out of our tourism funds to invest in the street in front of Town Hall from Collins to Harding. This was a uh, an initiative of a previous commission. They were just trying to beautify in front of town hall as it's now becoming the stable center for more events. The a way so that we don't need to the 400, we uh, as a, just on top of everything else, we're asking 9300 to pay for that design. And we are gonna decide what the design is. They just pay for the design efforts. That way, worst case scenario, we have a shelf ready project, even if we don't construct, but at least that uh, we don't invest design funds and then not afford it. Better that they pay for the flood. They committed yeah, 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 for the money for something else. Yeah. We can yeah. yeah. get the money for something else. Yeah. 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 Oh, this was the yeah. Yeah. They they pay for the funds. No, I have a quick question. When they put the 9300 building in, isn't their entrance to their parking on 93rd across the channel? How are we going to have town party there anymore? when they have to access their garage. Does that garage need to be relocated someplace else? Yeah. Because the town has to come first. It limits the use of any third street. So why did they approve a, a parking entrance in the middle yeah. of a quote party street for the whole town? That entrance can you move to why the other side of what? a religious exemption? Mm -hmm. They can, they can move their parking entrance story. elsewhere. That's it. That's a different discussion, but yeah. uh, the, the more immediate answer is yes, it's on any third street or garage. <laughs> that, that, well, we can't have that parties room. there if people are driving through it to get to their garage. Or we close their building for the party. Well, well why do they relocate <laughs> their garage entrance? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Their above ground garage entrance. That they okay, yeah. Yeah. anybody else? All right, time yeah. to continue. Thank you. Uh, then, then third street beautification, that's all. Surfside Memorial Park. We have two, $2,750,000 of which. Uh, one million is from the state, two hundred and fifty thousand is from Miami Dade County, and one point five is from in kind profits from the development. I'm sorry. So, what was the direction on the ninety third street beautification? Are we scrapping that and using that money for the Abbott Avenue drainage I would project? That. Well, well, I, maybe for like four hundred thousand dollars right now, that we're not talking. Yes, we're going to condos. I'm okay with that. What I think is we should have a simple uh, like we can have the street painted. A nice painted design that I don't think would take a lot of funds and it would beautify the street. And then at the same time, the, the rest of the funds should really go towards the Collins. Yeah. But we have to start saving for that. We sure do. Yeah, we could have a conversation at a commission meeting specifically to that and what okay. to do there. I've okay. just given you the information of that project, right. which is. I think so we put out a, a call to artists for a, a nice design for a street painting of, uh, you know, 93rd between yeah. Harding and Collins. You got to move that garage. You're not going to be able to. I was going to say, but the entrance yeah. thing is a, an yeah. issue. Well, well, you know, street painting is going to be a, it's a kind of a temporary thing because it, with time it wears down, but it, it would. You know, it's like a quick beautification that would uh, enhance the street, but you're not investing a lot because, yeah, there's going to there may be construction going on, so it's you know, it's a street. No matter no matter how you look at no, it, it's street. But at what point do we deal with the entrance to the buildings so that can affect our ninety third street? Immediately. Yeah. Yeah. I think that has to be put on. Yeah. For discussion and yeah. we'll put it on the agenda for further discussion by the body. 
Yeah. Surfside uh, would put our planner on that. Surfside Memorial Park, two point seven five million dollars. Oh, yeah. Okay. Are, are we? Are we? Uh, as far as the name for the memorial, I was going to ask that question. Well, that should be um, Champlain, Champlain Memorial, right? Yes. Not Champlain. not Surfside Memorial. What what did the the um the committee come up with? Families wanted to back away from the CTS name. They did. Now that is there. Were, it was a very small meeting of nobody, of very few people. Uh, at the we first, I want to okay. be. I want to be clear. And, and, and of all due respect, please, uh, we're engaging right now, and right. I, I, I invite positiveness. But there was a meeting or meeting minutes now that occurred March 18th, and we asked, "What name do you want?" And as much as the name CTS is the pronounced, they they did appreciate the memorial committee, the memorial part as a working. How many people were at the meeting? The, the committee was there. Four yeah. members of the four members, yes. yes. Four people were at the meeting. And how many, four out of six so, members. How many totals in the committee? Four out of six members. Was sure. the Langenfeld there? I'll tell you what, no. if you oh, wish to ask that. the, the Langenfeld how they feel about the name, I, I'll completely uh, well, call it whatever it is. One thing that well, we need to we've had, have a, I believe we've added two people to the committee. Uh, you've added David Rodin and Yanni Santos. So I'd like mm -hmm. the committee to reconvene and come back to us with. Their okay. thoughts on the name, whatever the name is. I'm, and if I you want to call it what they want to feel that comfortable. That makes sense. Yeah, not yeah. half a committee. Exactly. Is the I don't. Sorry, two questions important. I can't. I wasn't clear on the development order. Is the map using that area to stage their construction to prevent us from being able to build a memorial, there, or did they move their staging area elsewhere? No one's staging uh, for the agreement. No one's staging on it. So 88 is completely clear. We can put a memorial and start tomorrow. We could put it more there when we were ready for it. There was no construction trucks going accessing the site because originally they were supposed so to go there. We want to put it accessing the tomorrow. Right. We could put it there tomorrow. Excuse said we have to wait. Is that a yes or no answer? <laughs> it's just simple. Yes or no answer. Are they yeah. accessing? Yes. Okay. So they're not accessing the construction site from the end of 88 by the beach. Everyone will access the hard patch uh -huh. through that street up until we decide. Okay. That the, hard pack, there. the hard patch is the memorial area there. So it is. That's my question. They are letting them access the hard pack area, which prevents the construction of the memorial. That needs to be moved. Oh, and I think Gerardo had brought something. And I think George knows about this. Uh, yeah. Regarding oh, right. that yeah. moving of the. Um, yeah. That right. was something that. Yeah, you no, I, I'm interested in getting yes. the commission's uh, thoughts on this, but I would like at some point to direct the manager uh, to negotiate to move the driveway access from 8801 Collins. I feel like it's been. I've been very concerned about this. I, I, That's the agenda for April, so I want to stop you there now. We're on for April. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. So, okay. Then, then because I'll, it's on the agenda oh, okay. for April. All right. Then, okay. then I'll save my rant. But that's separate so, from the, the staging area for the construction. Let me ask you a question. It's all, it's all about if you want to put a monthly memorial there now, it will impede the access for me. It's, it's it, we control away the street. It's our street. Yeah, I know. The hard we pack, want the memorial to come before the development. We Absolutely. control the street. And, and the construction hard pack area because we're playing semantics. Yeah, yeah, no. They have <laughs> the construction trucks. I saw the plans accessing on their right from the hard pack on their property, but through our street. They street? can go through 96th Street or the 8th Street. What 96th? How would they go through 96th? Look, 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 look. It's 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 only an issue when it becomes an issue. Right exactly. now, it's not right an issue. Yeah. So let's not um, dwell on it. Okay. There's there's one other thing. Um, the FPL vault, though. I do. Um, it mentions um, the tomato. There's one other thing here, and I know it was from the uh, development order. That Hang on, guys. The Mac Hang goes, on. The Mac goes to the Memorial Park, but not the actual memorial. We don't want the in kind. No, I think Commissioner Velasquez we stated that one. we don't want the in kind. That we, should... we could ask. We could ask them. I think they were at one point when I sat down with them, they were more than willing to just give us the money. Okay. It, it's, it makes no difference to me. And so is this the design? This is what we have so far. Oh, that was the first meeting oh. minutes. Hmm. We had a we had a meeting March 18, okay. and I provided you the meeting minutes so you could see who participated and how that meeting kind of started morphing into discussions. Oh, and another thing on this one is remember that we had requested that a resolution to close down the street for the memorial. And this was during this whole process of this um, development order for this building, it was mocked and all other situations happened. I think that this needs to be set clear that this street will only be for this memorial. So um well, and then whatever needs to happen there needs to happen well there, there is this i don't know hector if you want to say anything about the, the fpl vault i see that the 
committee members are also expressing a wish that it be relocated. I don't know how exactly we got there. I thought that the 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 site plan that was approved by the previous commission said that if if FP, if uh, FDOC did not require uh, access on 88th, then they would not have it. And then somehow it seems the loading dock has moved over to Collins, but the FPL vault has remained. And I don't know if, what the exact if if our if the site plan approval said anything specifically about that, but it seems like they they're still holding on to a. It spoke about utilities, and it, it spoke that everything that's not a utility needs to be relocated. So okay, what I was thought. what was like uh, landsman's motion? Because that's what we're talking about, I think, right now. Yeah. I think well, we, well, they're calling it now different. Well, things. no, no, no. Let's let's go back and see. I mean, did yeah. landsman say move the trash, move the vault? He didn't say the ball. No. And it wasn't translated into did it. Did it say move the utilities? He said move the trash, and if you can, it's okay. Right. He didn't do anything. No, I know. But no, he did a little something. Right. Yeah. Oh, very. They split well, the they don't want any use of this street at all. Right. Uh, only for the memorial. So whatever needs to happen here needs to happen so we can get this, this situation. I, I raised that question because if, if, um, and I think Penn is on the phone here. He's watching. Um, I think that if uh, if that was raised at the meeting, then that legitimately has to be addressed also. So I think that we need to go back, Mr. Attorney, and you need to review that meeting and that tape, and you need to see if if it was what specific issues were addressed by Landsman in his proposal because he talked about splitting the baby and he said well if you can do this and you can do this and you can do this then i want you to do it but if you can't gee oh shucks that's too bad we'll just have to have the trash on the memorial mm -hmm. yeah. so that's kind of where it was mm -hmm. but um see see you know what i'm talking about what were the specifics because i think now gerardo's raising a good point we're talking about the vault and we're talking about potential access over the memorial to address the vaults. I think that's where you're going with that. The yeah. vault wasn't but part of it. Right. But that's yeah. just using the words here and changing mm -hmm. things to now have this when it was everything needed to be moved off of 88th Street onto their other side. Yeah, that's okay, exactly so, what I'm so, going to say. So, yeah. Mark, that, that'll, I'll be interested. You let me know what you find there. Thank you. So I just wanted to comment. So there isn't a definitive design. These are just ideas for elements. The first meeting where we're then at with the committee, the memorial committee and engineer is bouncing ideas off each other to create some kind of uh, parameters between the second and third mm -hmm. meeting. That'll be mm -hmm. more to more of a harder design. And then there's going to be additional meetings for public engagement, non TTS memorial committee. Um, and that way, they want to keep those meetings of this group intimate. Yeah. But they're not the only stakeholders or, or opinion in this. I think the Surfside residents are of, of, of an opinion in this. Yeah. But that would be a different type of meeting mm -hmm. that will result after we have the intimate information from the from the right. Because right. this looks so, to me like they're just you know starting to bounce ideas, ideas and concepts yeah. and see almost. Yeah. 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 Beautiful designs at the time. People submitted designs for memorial. We had some beautiful ones with like. Almost we, like we waves. Remember that? It, I had, uh, I had, you know, I kept putting that on the agenda, yeah. and I had given all of that documentation to Andy. If you would like me to provide all that documentation, I think it's really important when it comes to the actual memorial sculpture or artwork that's going to come back in. Keep in mind, of all the monies that we're using, all of this is, is public money, right. so we have to procure the service. We procured the service because we were required to. State appropriations, the Miami-Dade County, maybe those two. So we had to put out an RFP but for design services. Your, I mean, is this design services? Because I'm just seeing ideas. I'm not seeing any kind of design. Yeah, I, design so yeah, I, I mean, I, I think think that is the that is what we're doing. We're they're designing. Trying, they're trying to minimize it and make it like a passive park. And the idea was to have something called like spectrum park. beautiful. Structure. That, <laughs> right. That's art. That's also memorial that, right. you know, we want to never forget. And the developer wants to Want everyone to do that. No, so we're not on the so same. Yeah, yeah. 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 Those should be resubmitted and then whatever new rights come in. There is a call for artist component in this where yeah. there is an artist that's going to be brought on board and design whatever the. the so, okay, guys. That's a presumption there. That's a priority. I want to make two points. The presumption there, though, uh, to the manager seems to be that 
the two things are separable, that you design the park and then you leave open a space for the memorial artwork as though it's just a sort of afterthought or a separate thought. And I think maybe what, what we're saying here is that the two things are really tied together. Yeah, the, the, entire, entire, the entire thing is meant to be a memorial. So yeah. there isn't there isn't like this uh uh you know functional task that is an engineering task and then we add on a bit of art right. that the whole thing needs to be a dignified memorial. We're on the same page. And then yeah. to, to the other point, uh, Commissioner Landsman says uh here, I want to address this point that the families didn't ask for the move of the vault. And his motion was only about the loading area and sanitation operations. The ball moved. Okay, let me just speak to it. I, you know, I think that what is emerging here as well is that I our intention as a commission, I believe, and I think it's also the intention of the 2022 resolution is that the full block be yeah. the memorial. Yeah. So anything else. The idea was to move it off away from 88th yeah. Street, and that yeah. it, you know, yeah. that it not be visual Correct. clutter, that it not be detracting from the dignity of the memorial. So the vault, I mean, is I think always been part of the intention, and I can't remember how much we mentioned it at the meeting. Yeah. Gerardo, to your point though, Mark has information. Oh yeah, right. So uh, in reviewing the uh, clerk's notes from the meeting of September 27, 2023, at which <laughs> this particular motion was addressed and resolved three to two. Um, mm -hmm. The three being the mayor, then mayor, vice mayor, and uh, Commissioner Lansman in favor. They accepted out of the 88th Street corridor um, use of that roadway for emergency and utility service. And utilities. That was accepted out. Oh, Another so that means it remains. It remains. Okay. So can we change that? The key yeah. is whatever we design, if this constraint still exists for whatever reason. Their access wouldn't be through a roadway. It would have to be through a green space or whatever. It well, is. so it would have to be through their building. Through their property. So yeah. through their property. So if they want to continue to have that, they would have to have a roadway that goes from their property mm -hmm. into that area. That's and that's it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They can't use 88th Street at all. Yeah. So mm -hmm. well, that's an interesting point. So um <laughs> they we let we 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 have a resolution that designates 88th Street and says what we expect 88th Street to be. The developer knew that all along, right? Yeah. There's there's a catch in there. And, yes. and, and there, well, the catch is it was for emergency services, I think, and access to the properties north and south. And that's the. No, I don't think that was in there. It's because yeah. because at that point you didn't have the south property didn't have access. Right. You could recreate where the access is coming right. from because. It, it's a blank canvas. Okay, let's find it. Get, can you pull up that resolution, please? It, it, it's how it's written. I mean, no, 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 listen, listen. No, I know it didn't have emergency, but it I don't believe it. it. And we had the access. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, I think I had the first thing that's the word required. But what required was Required left. wasn't for the South property. Oh, so so oh George, left. okay. Let, listen, let's get George while we're looking for this resolution. Go ahead, George. So a handful of things here. Yeah, definitely a name change, I think, is in order. Uh, uh, Commissioner Vildostegui's comments about that the memorial should be of the entire property, uh, entire street, and not a, a bauble in the corner of a park. Uh, and most, well, not most importantly, it's all important. This vault business, a vault or an electrical vault, which is typically about a 30 by 30 foot room, has to be directly adjacent to the switchgear room, which is your main electrical room for the building. Uh, otherwise, it makes no sense. And that has to be next to the generator, uh, which has to vent to the outside. And then you're really talking about that's where you want your fire pump, your water pump, and your mechanical rooms to be as well. So this whole train of what we would call back of house uh, components really wants to travel with the loading dock. You wouldn't do a building where you have the loading dock on the north, uh, the south side and all this other stuff on the north side, remaining on the north side. It should all move as one piece. Uh, basically, that whole back of house portion of the building should have flipped once you move the loading dock and the, the FPL vault shouldn't be an issue. I, George, it shouldn't be an issue, but how are, how are you proposing that that should be addressed? I said to flip it to the north side. Oh, well, to yeah, the south, south side. South. Yeah, south, 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 south side. Yeah, yeah. South. Right. Where they're going to put the loading dock. All right. Okay. Because it's it. not just the vault. There's all kinds of other spaces mm -hmm. uh, yep. also, associated with it. 
Right. That are going to, that would need access, you mean, right? Yeah. Well, they need access. Right. Anybody that's uh, working on the electrical switch gear is not going through the lobby. They're coming through the side of the building. It's yeah. going to have its own set of double doors there to Correct. get to the switch gear. The generator will need to come in and out. It'll have a set of doors and vents and louvers. Uh, there's a lot going on with all those rooms. Okay. Very good. Thank you, sir. Um, I got a text from Martin about the name of the, uh, uh -huh. he says, Sir Sh Surside Champlain Memorial. <laughs> that, yeah. Will this, whatever it is, okay. want to call it. Whatever, so, whatever the they board mean. everywhere is going to say, that's Martin's, but I respect Martin. For his well, I said, we, we have a memorial committee that was working with Hector as the middleman to all stakeholders. Shlomo was a part of it, but that didn't help much. It would be good to all get together. Yes, I would. I would love that. Okay. So but the good yeah. news is I have clear direction when folks are calling. Maybe we do a round table for that type of meeting. Sure. Yeah. And um, yeah. we sit with the. Well, listen, the beautiful thing together. is, I think yeah. we're all yeah. very solidly in agreement here. Yeah. Charles, yes. that was Surfside Champlain Memorial. Yeah. Surfside Champlain Memorial. Yeah. And that's the name. They're good with that. Is that what they want? I'm good with them. Okay. I got it. So okay, so here's the rest. Here's the resolution. Uh, so this is uh, this for the record, uh, Reso 2022 uh, dated January 11, 2022, uh, the pertinent portion of which is section two. Uh, direction to the manager to pursue the closure of 88th Street east of Collins to vehicular traffic for the purpose of providing a memorial park and pedestrian plaza honoring the victims of the Champlain Tower South collapse. Uh, the manager was directed to take all steps necessary to pursue all governmental approvals necessary to permanently close that portion of 88th Street located in between Collins Avenue on the west and the public beach to the east at the street end to vehicular traffic for Memorial Park and pedestrian plaza honoring the victims. No, there's more. There's and, more. and the closure of any portion of 88th Street to vehicular traffic is subject to the maintenance of emergency or governmental vehicular access and any access required to reach property north and south of the street end. Wait, wait. To that's it. To reach the property, read the last sentence. Last sentence. The closure of any portion of 88th Street to vehicular traffic is subject to the maintenance of emergency or governmental vehicular access and any access required to reach property north and south of the street end. So that would be on the hard path. North yes. and south of the street end. The hard well, path, not the street. The hard right. path of the street, the street end. Yeah, when street you, end is, is that but when you, see, a fine term. when you see how it was platted, yeah. but wait a minute, the street end, end the street end is, is, is the hard path, right? Yeah. The street end is the entire street, it's a street end. It's so, a street uh, end. Well, well, it, it, it talks about the street end. If we could clarify that, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll get it. Yeah. All three, the street end is a defined term, it is, it is. Where is it? I'm going to tell you, uh, uh -huh. 88th Street in between Collins Avenue on the west and the public beach to okay. the east. That is the defined street end. Okay. So the so whole, that whole street 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 street. Street. So, so it's all, the only access is the hard part. The hard part. Yeah. Right. For the north, from the north to the south. No, the no. I think I think what that's saying is that uh, the properties on the south and the north shall have access mm -hmm. okay, to their properties by way of of mm -hmm. the street end. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So as required. Is, is that what it said? As required. Well, well, it's it's required. Well, it was required on the south side. Is it open? Yes. Yeah. 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 That's how I mean. But, but is that word in there? Required? The word required, required is in there. But yeah. what is it? Read it again. The last sentence is the one that, that he's talking about. The closure of any portion of 88th Street to vehicular traffic is subject to the maintenance of emergency or governmental vehicular access. And any access required to reach property north and south of the street end. Okay. So you know. So required would south. mean that they had no other choice. Yeah, yeah, went to the right. Correct. So, so if there is another choice, it's not required. Exactly. That's where you get a tiny more welcome, please. That's <laughs> 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 I'm not trying to <laughs> 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 
and the, and I'll just okay. say this is what this is why the 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 lack of the negotiation for the north side has been so troublesome to me. Exactly. Yeah. The south yeah. side doesn't have requirements, only the exactly. north. Mm -hmm. We do have a yeah. in April. We'll discuss that. Yeah. And I get my marching orders. So we know what to do. The north is very minimal, though. It's. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I think we've made some okay. progress and we have a better understanding now on the memorial. Go ahead. Next item, please. Mayor, the next item is a fully grant funded item. We have now moved <laughs> forward with anything regarding this item. Uh, the, actually, the, through your previous commission, um, there was a talks about $80,000 for a Cat 5 study of this building. And it was discussed that we can get some extra money from the outside. Let's do it. We actually got three hundred thousand dollars. So the eighty thousand dollars gets pushed into the reserves. Um, what that did is it allowed us to seek for a grant that we did get, and it allows us to do a cast five study for this building, but also a vulnerability assessment for the entire town to determine what our vulnerabilities are. And it goes beyond just natural. It's also man-made vulnerabilities uh, like cyber attacks. It will definitely go into uh, utilities vulnerabilities that we have. Uh, would this also assess like? For example, buildings that are non-conforming to FEMA standards. It's a vulnerability assessment, but definitely <laughs> because that's something that um, we yeah, have it. It's <laughs> very dangerous, and I would definitely not support something. We a vulnerability <laughs> assessment is a is a document that every municipality should have in their books well, because they so assess then we it. We can go after our buildings no, and say they're, that they're no, no, so it's it's a, a, no, no but, okay. but that's a separate thing. Just because a building is non-conforming. To FEMA standards doesn't mean the building is vulnerable. Right. I know, but okay. that's how they're going to be able to use but it. Doing that anyway, them. I don't think this study is yeah. going to affect This study that. allows but us to. So maybe the study could prove oh, that yeah. these buildings are, are, okay. are safe right. in, in, in so, spite of the fact oh, that they're yes. not conforming. No, we need to know, like, if there's a category five, where can there be a command center? What what, what functionality is going to remain? Like, it's public infrastructure, area. public assets, like Christina was saying. It assesses what our vulnerabilities are to what stuff yeah. that the town controls. Our roadways, maybe there's, I, I want to stretch it to that point, but we haven't really defined a scope of services because we haven't signed any engineers on board for this yet. As I recall, when this came up on the, the previous previous commission, uh, it was to harden this town hall. It's, that's the Cat 5 study. Yeah. But that was $80,000 we put aside, but we always knew that wasn't going to be enough. But we always said, that commission said, Get us outside funding so we could use tap it to the 80. Yeah. Well, we got 350, 300. So, with that said, the 80, we don't even need to use it. It's not even a matching grant. It's not matching, right? It only matches. The, no, no matching part. So, and we have to. That's is, great. Can I keep to it, Mayor? Yeah, yes. So, um, it's a vulnerability assessment. FDP, the Resilient Florida, put this out a few years ago. Pretty much every city has gotten it, you know, from here to Timbuktu. And um, Bar Harbor is finishing theirs right now. It looks like your, you know, your, your buildings, your roadways, it's looking mainly at sea level rise and anything that's gonna basically impact your infrastructure long-term when you're looking at the coastal issue that we're having right now. Um, FDP is mandating that we do this, but we cannot apply for, basically we're not gonna apply for future resilient Florida funding without it, but we have to get it done. So uh, this is definitely, and if they're paying for it, why not? We don't touch it, but we have it. We, have it. we just need to get an engineer on board. So we have a mandatory evacuation now. No one can hear. We're not allowed to stay here or have a command center. Everyone has to leave. You have to leave. Uh, mandatory doesn't mean we're going to go and grab you. You leave. No, 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 no. Critical services are not going to come to you. Correct. Right. And we're not, nobody's supposed to stay. Everyone's if there's a mandatory evaluation, you might have to leave. You up your van and get out. So, can those monies be used to provide evacuation services? No, it's the vulnerability oh. assessment to determine. What are vulnerabilities? Oh, scuba chase, we all, but we also need to know after is. the storm, you yeah, know, the building. Send down the watch. Oh, yeah, yeah. watch everybody out. No, Get the police department. We need to know door after, to door. after a storm, you can come back to town hall and what no, can no, you no, expect? No. And when, you know, we're yeah, almost there, Mayor. Yeah. The last, those were all the big projects. Life preservers. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, what's next? Please. Smaller projects. Uh, oh, there's more? Small oh, projects. Oh, These oh, are oh, yeah. small projects. Mayor. $160,000 to improve this town hall the day is the full is uh, the. Oh, yeah, we talked about that. We've got to reconsider that, right? Yeah. 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 I, 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 yeah I don't want to see what slow mo redesigning yeah. the commission <laughs> chamber. No. If, if uh, I may, the yeah. carpet has to go. <laughs> the carpet has to go. I like it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
like our day. You want I like our day. Please be raised because we can't get chairs that are tall. Chairs on the days go back. Get those TVs off of the deck. Yeah, they're going to be out for here. We've already done that. Do you want me to circulate some design options? We're not going to. My goal is. I don't want to touch things that perhaps are good. The days is fine. And you feel it's fine. Oh, so yeah. Get a refreshment center or something. That's and a better chair for the town attorney. Yeah, right. Yeah. Massage wow. chair. Yeah. 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 I got I got screwed up plenty about I, I, but well why don't you first locate the secret cameras? There may be cameras already. I don't want my my yeah, I I love you. But I don't know. Have... <laughs> <laughs> There's a fourteen. Just forward with that. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Yeah, the yeah, the heater is out. Oh, we definitely need a heater. That's all that. Yeah. Oh, that's all that is. So, are we good with the cool heater? Yeah. 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 So, so we need more. to order. Well, so that's why I said sorry, Miguel. Oh, you're you're yeah. officially got the watch. I don't know. It's not long. It's a lot of water. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah. I think, you want to talk yeah, to Yeah, I think that would yeah. be tied in with the, all the traffic stuff. Eventually, have, right now, even in a walk to, I need to get permission from the county. I never saw it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So I don't this, know either, I mean, but I think this um, one. it makes sense to be part of the whole yeah, traffic study. I think yeah. that should be everything. Because okay. I don't know, where did that come from? That it all, it <laughs> well, that was giving, uh, 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 you know, yeah. getting some. Happy points in some other part yeah, of the town. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Protecting our uh, uh, high profile residents. Yes. <laughs> then I, I, the other one should be a really. Listen, it may be a good idea, but I never it saw it. I mean, you know, when I was asking about it, I was like, Let's what does it look like? Yeah, you look at somebody saying, everybody's on board town. with it. And we're like, yeah. well, with what? With what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, no, it should be part of the traffic study. So that way, exactly. You know, because let's say you're putting that there, but then you want to circle on the following block. Maybe they don't need to be that close to exactly. and, and I mean, I there, don't know. There, there, there is no is. other particular reason that we're missing why this was broken off from the other. The main reason. I mean, I mean just, it becomes a different conversation, but it has a lot to do with stop signs. It's the and, same reason we have a butterfly park where we have one and the same reason sidewalk we're talking about just because well no that's, I'm just, that's what i know i mean agree with you i, I think that's yeah, kind right. of was the rationale and the process security for certain individuals exactly yeah, yeah. Exactly. um how about uh right. the last one which is 95th street sidewalks we, I, think I think we, we already clear. addressed that didn't we well it's just there i put it there I, it's officially yeah, on hold was, it's not i just I put it there then it's, stop that one yeah well i do want to bring back the conversation at some point i mean okay. I, I feel like um we do have right now uh a situation where the the Byron sidewalks are disconnected from anything else. The, the, yeah. There are sidewalks yeah. at, at 95th and yeah. Byron, yeah. but then there are not, then there's nothing. So the and then you have a, a really nice corner redesign at 95th but and Abbott. that should be something that should be part of that traffic study as well. Well, they, or the beautification of the street. Beautification. What is that yeah. considered yeah. sidewalk on Byron? They're and like uh, on but, 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 yeah, just like that. Well, yeah. So if I, know that. if I may, we have a we have a very uh like irrational hodgepodge right now. Yeah, it's especially on the east side of 95th. Yeah. And I do think it's worth doing something about that. I do think there is a concern about walkability there. I said, you know, I said this before. I think it, uh, I walk a lot and I avoid 95th Street because it doesn't feel safe. And you know, a lot of people may not have that option. I think I think we do have a problem here. So I don't want to just. Put it on hold and forget about it. I think we need to come back. Maybe, maybe one thing I would propose is trying to just do the the Byron Abbott at the Byron Abbott connection. Um, well, you know, we think about the rest. Or I don't know. Um, I defer to a commission discussion. We can have it. And we can put that on. I think on this later is going to be yeah. kind of. I'm, I'm okay with talking about it. I think yeah. I'm, I want to talk about the, the painted. The, the walkways, right. that's what I want to talk right. about. I think this yeah. belongs in the workshop on the traffic study and the beautification. Good. It's yeah. all kind of... Let's do it. I, yeah. I will say, for anybody in the commission who has it, I did walk the, the Bay Drive sidewalk uh, in our last yet. discussion of it, and it's really nice. Okay. It's, it's a really... It really feels safer and different, and I encourage... If you haven't... If you've been used to walking in Surfside on the street, try the Bay Drive, the new Bay Drive sidewalk. I'm going to put a pole in the garbage. Just... Try walking on the new Bay Drive sidewalk is my, my suggestion to everything. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I, I don't I don't I, I don't love it. I, I love I you know again I I uh I love our green, I love our natural sort of beautiful town, and I think that I, I, I still believe and that's why I'm looking forward to having that conversation. I'm open minded. Yeah. But I, I think that if we could have those beautiful walkways all over town, I think those could do the same, serve the same purpose, and we could have more trees and more green. And um listen, I appreciate Randy who built that sidewalk. And uh, you know, but uh I you know, just because I don't love the sidewalk doesn't mean I don't love you. <laughs> okay and so yeah you know but i appreciate what you did and uh but anyway i think that's it folks yeah. hey, the, these are mission these all are right projects wow we got it done in three hours beautiful David. congratulations everybody yes. um so thank you all for coming yeah. appreciate y'all okay. um, so we so we can close uh, yeah, yeah yeah would you like to go ahead just been waiting uh, uh, oh, oh. You know, you got to hit me or something. You got to throw something at me. Uh, I needed to stand up too. <laughs> okay, first of all, good afternoon.
I'm very happy. Congratulations to all of you uh, on your election. Okay. Can you please just say your name and understand? I'm so sorry, and I have it here. My name is Miriam Alvarez, and I'm a resident at 9216 Abu Dhabi since 1995. Sursa is my hometown where I raised my family for the past 29 years. Thank you. Children know each other. Um, on the town commission meeting on March 26 that I watched online, I noticed that many of our town's residents expressed their concern on traffic and safety issues that are now an everyday reality for all of us. And I'm glad that it is a top priority on your agenda. Mm -hmm. um, I am a commercial attaché for the Quebec government based here in our new Miami office. The role of our office is to nurture relationship between Montreal and Florida and to introduce our city officials to your city, to our city, okay? Uh, and then give you an opportunity to discuss implemented solutions that have improved in Montreal and Quebec, the ecosystem, which is exactly what everybody's here. You know, this is an option. So for example, public safety with smart bus stops, traffic control, and school buses, electric, et cetera. Um, also, as we know, Canada has had a long history in our town of Surfside. And I believe that we could work together with the Surfside Tourist Board on bringing future Canadian events for our residents to maintain that legacy. I look forward to keeping Surfside special as a piece of paradise. I've always said this was paradise for all of our families and visitors. Um, all I want to do is give you that option that, you know, bring closer the government's officials with you to offer other solutions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, great. I think we might have found our next sister city. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.